We are live. Hello. Action's back. Hello, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. Um, before we start, I want to say thank you to all the condolence messages I got. I was swamped. That's very Made sweet. me feel very, very special. Thank you very much for that. What was that about? Oh, His my grandma. grandma. Getting a different haircut. Oh, okay. No, my grandma died. Jesus. <laughs> Can we talk about your grandma dying? Because she was... I loved your grandma. Um... I was very saddened to hear it, but also... I'm going to put a bit more piss cam on. You keep talking. It's a bit white. You keep talking. Wait, what are you going to do to it? It's just very white. But don't don't, don't screw it up. I'm not going to screw it up. I'm just doing slightly more piss cam. Go on. Um, I guess, just look, wait, this is on. the best time to talk about it because I wouldn't want to talk about it on the main pod. And it gets way more heavenly when we do. Oh, you're fixing the lights. Yes. Okay. Well, if by fix you mean blinding us. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, do well, you want to talk about the last moments or something? Yeah It was very scary Not scary It was um, interesting So just before <laughs> she passed away She was basically in her own world And she was saying things like um, Move out of the way, let me go You, move, move, I want to go and she Whoa. was she was talking to heavily drugged out. Yeah, she was by this point Jeez. what had happened was that um basically all her um all her functions were slowly going, her kidneys were going or whatever. Shit. So basically it got to a point where the doctors were like, Look, there's not much that can That's happen brutal. from now on. So basically the family made a decision that we're gonna uh move away all the stuff that was supporting her, like the extra oxygen and everything. Just to ease the transition. And then they started, uh, basically gave her heavy painkillers, morphine, so that she doesn't feel the pain of it. But she was conked out and she came out of consciousness to say, get out of the way. Yeah. Well, I don't know if she was conscious or not at that point. The doctors were saying that, because she wasn't saying anything. She had stopped saying stuff. And the doctors were saying, look, she can, she can hear you guys. She can understand what's happening, but so you can keep talking to her. But uh, I think my understanding was that she was too exhausted to just say anything at that point, but not too exhausted for that. And basically, when we told the nurse that, oh, um, so she's saying all of this stuff, and she was like, yeah, that means that she's about to go. And that's what everyone says before they die. Yeah. What do they say? They say stuff like that. Like Shit. they talk Except to Kerry angels. Packer who said that there's nothing. <laughs> My mum's retort. <laughs> yeah, like Kerry Packer. He, was, he died and then came back to life. His heart stopped for a while. Really, and then he dude? Said, there's no, nothing there. It's all a lie. No. But mum's response was, "Man, if there's going to be nothing in the afterlife for anyone, it's going to be Kerry Packer." <laughs> Like you're a giant Euro shine. I tried to grab it and apparate it, and then all yous appeared. <laughs> That's like the modern version of hell, right? <laughs> modern version of hell is good people go to heaven, bad people don't go anywhere. Mm, uh, I guess so. so. The but if you guys have had someone that died, can you tell us if they started <laughs> talking to other dead people? Because someone that my mum was looking uh, after is, is the word that I'm searching for. <laughs> mm -hmm. For a few weeks before he went... He'd have conversations with people when she'd walk in and give him a peanut butter sandwich. And they'd mm. say, who are you talking to? And he'd go, oh, I was just having a long, in-depth chat with Bill about fishing. Mm. Bill had been dead for years. Was he doped up? No. And wow. then she talked to the doctor and said, yeah, he's on his way out. Same thing. This happens all the time. When someone's mm. on their way out, they start talking to friends that have already died. That's and then cool. the other thing was a nurse in Lithgow. Yeah. Do you remember her saying that every now and then she'd have a patient that would say, well, it's been a great ride, Martha, but I'm on my way out, so I, I'll be dead. I, I guess I won't see you. And she'd be like, oh, yeah, whatever. And then they were dead the next day. She even, before, when she was going to the hospital, she That's kept saying nuts. that she's, she's not going to come back from this one. Yeah. She never said that before. Wow. She was saying, I want to say goodbyes. I'm not going to come back from this one. So she kind of new that's interesting it's strange because i don't know the point when i stopped being a teenager 
<laughs> I can tell you. How that. is that related? Yeah, 20. 29. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your case, 30. Still yeah, going. 31, right? <laughs> yeah, 30. Yeah, yeah. This is my 21st. <laughs> 21 forever. You're still yeah. perpetually. <laughs> <laughs> OG twenty one forever. Yeah. Uh, but wait. So does that mean? Are we saying? Actually, let's get the audience to. Uh, um, okay. There's Tim Chuma says, my mom was a nurse on the ward where all the oldies would go to pop, pop off. off. Yeah. As she had been that's there for so long, word. the adult children would ask her to look out for them. Oh, that's just an experience story. Tell me if there's a god or not. Yes. That was nice, but tell us if, if, if there's God. Or at the very least, ghosts. And tell us in seven words or less. It's not bloody, uh, you know, we're not on Yulu. It's Twitch. <laughs> what the hell is Yulu? I don't know. I think it's a... Did you just invent that? I think it's a rideshare. Holy shit, Miss Love is secretly a social media billionaire. <laughs> Who has one of these John Barilaro nut keychains <laughs> available for $15, which in his own words is extremely overpriced. I beg to differ. <laughs> Every time I've looked at this, I've yeah, been yeah. like, look, I don't care if there's an can afterlife. You, I'm, I'm in angle. heaven already. Show him, change the camera. Give it Give it to... Uh, there you go. There you go. The lighting's not great. great but smug and dumb stooge. And for once in my life, I've got pics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the low, 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 low price. That's so offensive. The deputy premier's neck is a shaft. It's so offensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 like it's, it's you might have gone too far, but you know, it's all you it's, have it as a keychain now. No, I wasn't going to put it on, and then you told me how much it cost to make. I'm like, well, we've got to get my money's worth. You know, come on, chuck it on there. <laughs> Your <laughs> money's <laughs> worth of it being absolutely free. Yes, you chuck it. All right, well, you know, it's a thought God, account. It's, it's value it's to a, a value. homeless person. I guess no money is still a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, any more we, God stories? We, uh, look, no, I think no one's saying. Does anyone believe in heaven? Is this is this an uh, insensitive thing for me to do? Be talking about my grandma on the pre-show? Why the main part? I don't know. Uh, look, I think. But you believe in God now? It takes a I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it more diplomatically than that. Let's just say I've gone back to the drawing board. Mm. And that happened even before my experience with my grandma. Good. Because, um, I don't know, maybe this is like a really, really stoner point. Hey. So the same thing uh. that made me atheist 10 years later is making me a believer. What's so, that? Well, I Oops, think sorry. what really sealed it for me, the, the self-belief that God doesn't exist, probably happened after I... I read Selfish Gene and I watched a shitload of David Attenborough docos. Mm. And the whole idea of evolution and all of that stuff was just so, it, it made me not a believer. But then I was watching another documentary about um, the dinosaur era and uh, the meteor strike or whatever we think happened. And then uh, how that paved way for human evolution. And, and it was land before time. And I started looking at the entire project of the universe as like someone made a game. You need to go through certain steps for the next thing to happen mm. somewhere else. And it's the whole cause and effect thing. Everything that I believe in, every effect that I believe or I know of today, mm. I can relate to a cause except for God or except for the existence of the universe. That seems to be the only point that has no cause to the effect. And I'm just saying, I don't know if I know all the answers anymore. And the fact that, like, I started looking into, like, um, um, basically the virtual world, how that works, because I was really, um, I just didn't understand how algorithms work. And the more I looked into algorithms, the more I understood, oh, wait, that's how we work, too. We're working according to an algorithm, except that this algorithm isn't designed by some guy sitting in like a Silicon Valley office. This is an algorithm. We just don't know who made it or what made it. Even if it happened organically, it <coughs> is a very algorithmic. Mizav, do you know what he's saying? I don't get it. I mean, yeah, no, I get what he's saying. Like, Life's it's just an algorithm. It's just a game. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. It <laughs> It seems like this universe is a very <laughs> elaborate game for someone. 
or something. Look, can I, yeah. I, I can weigh in with this. Like my, a friend of mine strangely died. Uh, I think the same day that the, we had the same funeral the yeah. same day and it was really sad. He died of cancer. It was really young. It was, it was horrible. I tell you what it does though. It, 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 um, not, you know, this isn't exactly what you're talking about, but it makes you reassess your life to the core. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy because it brings it to earth where you're like, holy shit. Like any day I can go, any day. Not in Ali's case, right? I'm okay with your going. Was, your, your, your grandma was almost going to get a letter from the queen mm, true. if she was born just a hundred Ks to the south. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't get what that Damn, means. Damn, that's a history lesson right there. Is that some like old school... No, I have no. What the hell are you talking? I don't know. You're from Pakistan, so you don't get a letter from the Queen. Oh, right? India, right? Oh, yeah, wait, so what? Well, when you're does everyone get here, a letter from the Queen if they die <laughs> in Australia? What? No, if they reach a hundred, no, the Queen will say thank you very much for, for your existing for this long. That, are you in Australia? That's all the goals I want. Well, it's I've got a new reason to live. What? I've got a new reason to get to a hundred. That's yeah, my only reason. <laughs> but can we also hope the queen reaches a hundred as well? I think she's <laughs> close, bro. She's the same age. She uh, well, she was the same age as my grandma. How, if I, if you don't mind me asking, how old was your grandma? Uh, probably we don't know for sure, but she she was like close to ninety five. Come again? Yeah, everyone from Pakistan and India always says, I am 270 years old. <laughs> yeah. So you're a Galapagos tortoise. No, no, no. I am just loved by Vishnu. <laughs> <laughs> because we uh, uh, we don't, we weren't that big on um, recording shit <laughs> for the longest time. <laughs> what, like, but hey, steel. Oh. even little details like birth certificates? Yeah, no, no they don't exist. Your, your life yeah. began with high school. So your age Whoa. was determined once you went to high school. So wait, basically like once you get laid, they're just sort of like, yeah, here's your diploma, dude. Based and like delivered by Stifler. <laughs> yeah, so it's all dependent <laughs> on like events. They always say, well, I was uh, five years old during the Great War and that's how you judge someone's age. Wow, that's, how cool that you, I didn't know I was alive, alive in a time where that still happened. And, and that's happening in your family. Like, yes. you're like a, it's like a pirate. You're like a pirate kind of. Well, I don't have an eye patch, but other than that, yes, you're right. <laughs> so much was, other than that, yeah. So she was in a okay. So so like ninety five. Yeah, she was. She was definitely mate. That's ni a, well, like look, 94, you know, 95. As sad as it that. is, like that's a great innings. But I mean, you do want them to get to. And 100. she had a sick that's life. The, that's the yeah. She had a great life. She had a. I think she had a really good life. I would take her life. That's really yeah. And so yeah. you think that her saying "get out of the way" was her going to heaven? Because uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, heaven or whatever, whatever it may be, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a strange feeling, man. Even like looking at like a casket of someone, it's like it just gets you. It. I don't know if you've ever had that, but it really, it really does make you readjust every element of your life. Yeah. Like things that you know, things become superfluous pretty quickly. Things that aren't important, you know. You're just like, who gives a shit? The somber atmosphere for. But you know what? This is also a true story. Uh, right after the mosque, I was already thinking about like how I might be wrong because I, I was I was straight up I, I'm, I was an extreme atheist because Jordan knows I'm, I'm not one of those people that tries to make everyone else an atheist, but I was pretty firm in my own beliefs. And after the mosque, even before my grandma had passed away, I was still thinking about like, oh, maybe I might be wrong about this. And right after the funeral prayers, I was like, oh, maybe maybe I should look into this whole Muslim stuff. And then my after the mosque, my we were really hungry. And my brother was like, "Hey, um, do you want to get a, a bacon and egg sandwich?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah I'll get it." So, <laughs> so I've abandoned I've abandoned that plan. So that <laughs> Instantly, <laughs> it's off the table. That's <laughs> so good. You're like huh, the spiritual moment, thinking about the after. Like, hey man, do you want some bacon? Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. So so so, so, the, so that plan has been culture. aborted. Uh, I'm not going to be a Muslim, but. Hindu. Nah, none of the, none of the, cause th this is, okay. I don't know if a God exists, but I definitely know that it's not the God that all of these religions are talking about. That <laughs> shit is clear. <laughs> it's just lame to be an atheist. Most atheists are grumpy. They don't necessarily, they're always the ones that are like nihilists that live for, that, you know, they're not involved in any charity or anything out of themselves. They're so sort of self-involved. Generally. That's, that's judgmental. You don't know. So often, every time, like, there's no God. 
hit that fucking bong, you know, every, or like <laughs> do that line of ketamine. There's no God. Remember it while you're doing it. It's like, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of uh, there's some, it's just too, uh, it's too arrogant for me. Well, he's right. Well, Pretty much awesome. every interaction that Miss has ever had with an atheist sends in, dude, you've got a cross on you. That's so lame. You're a fucking loser. Yeah, what did you do last night? Bashed your bouncer's head in because <laughs> you wouldn't let me in the club. <laughs> There's nothing satanic about that. <laughs> what did you do the week before that? Pissed on a church. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know if I should be getting advice on whether God does or doesn't exist from someone who is questionably the devil. <laughs> Probably not the best source. But I think that's cool that you, I think that's cool that you've, you know, I don't know, man. I think it's just more of, it's, it's almost more of a reflection on someone's psychology in terms of, how inquisitive they are and how much they're willing to someone that is interested in education. It's not, it's not, I'm not like what you said is kind of cool. I'm not saying there's any right or wrong or just to be uh, is it agnostic. Is that the term? Yeah, I guess that's what or just to be curious. It's hard. Look, without sounding douchey, it's hard to look up at the stars and just be like, I'm not saying it couldn't be completely random, but it's just like, you know, maybe there has to be a religion where it's like the beauty in, uh, the si- <clears throat> the beauty of the science is pretty incredible too. You know, it's just like we're made of stardust. All of these one, these, these, everything. You know, mm, not so. as beautiful as the idea of. And then God decided to rip one of his ribs, <laughs> off, and that was me. No, that wasn't God. I that was that's Adam. A lot more beautiful. I like that too, actually. Do you? Well, yeah. As beautiful as the idea that we're all made of stardust. They're all cool. That's great. I think Buddhism because it reminds you of the shop burgers and ribs. <laughs> Here's the most uh, Man. <laughs> Here's the most agnostic statement ever by Jack Seven Six Eight. Yeah, I like the concept of God. It's a great moral system. Can there be anything <laughs> more agnostic than that? Yeah, I think that's true though. And for Sam, Sam is just saying, uh, "That's cool, whatever. Just don't blow up on us." I cannot confirm that just yet. I have to make a me. What does mm. blow up on? Well, because I'm Muslim. Now. Oh, for fuck's sake! Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What's that ticking sound? <laughs> what is it? I can hear it. It's saying Panthera. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Just before he dies. Oh man, I'm gonna get cancelled for this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! It, it's so sad. We have to say Panthera so often. I'm using it in jokes now. I'm working it into jokes. It's part of your tight five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Part of my tight five. Yeah, you're so right. Yeah. Is it PH? How do they spell that? Uh, yeah. Anyway, here's a, someone just said, "Ali, you should look into Christianity." Is this is definitely a Panthera moment? At least for me, <laughs> I will not become a Christian. Because oh, here we go. I think it's a little gay. <laughs> I'm not saying say the is, line. I'm not I mean, saying Panthera, Panthera, Panthera. But I'm not saying Islam is the best either. I'm just saying no. But it is. The, it's definitely that word that you just said that I'm not allowed to say. What do you mean? But oh shit! Because, uh, man, look I at this. About that, this is a double whammy, Christians and no. But you're allowed to say because you're Muslim. But <laughs> but oh, the, I don't uh, mean it as an insult or anything. Actually, I've when I was hanging out with Rudd <laughs> on the weekend, Ooh. his his uh, wait 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 name drop. All right, continue. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, it's not even a name drop for me anymore. It's just one of my friends, you know. But um, <laughs> I was hanging out with him, and his his son was there. Such a Christian family. His son looks like Jesus. I wouldn't be surprised at all if this was the second coming. He comes down and is like, yeah, decided to study film at Sydney Uni for a bit. And I was hanging out with him. <laughs> he got woken up for 10 years straight. I did not understand how heavily Christian Kevin Rudd is. Really? His alarm bell was... Ke- Imagine this, Kevin Rudd coming in every morning and singing the Ned Flanders song where he goes, you know, Christianity, as you know, just praying and going to church. Hey, dig this. God said to Noah, there's going to be a flirty, flirty. That's a real song. And he got woken up for a decade to the Kevin Rudd singing that song. <laughs> Wait, 
<laughs> Man, he is Ned. I, I got to say it. You have to. Christianity is pretty gay. Oh, for fuck oh, it God. really is. No. That's so <laughs> lame. <laughs> Panthera, Panthera. That's Please, Panthera. Jesus. Is there any other word for it? Cool. Cool. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, sure, man. I mean, they do say dig beforehand. That's right. I can't believe, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a scenario <laughs> that is less lame than that. You know, look, okay, I'll, I'll give yeah. you, I said that because I think modern day Christianity or like the Christianity practice in Australia is too Romanized, which I'm not a fan of. Like, it's all about demigods, Jesus, the son of God and all that shit. I'm, I'm kind of still like Muslim at heart in the sense like, nah, there's only one and you can't see him, bitch. Don't pretend that you can't. <laughs> Is that is that what uh, the doctrine says? Yeah, look, the songs are definitely uh, the songs are all right. The songs I'm still, are I'm still all right. just like tripping out at that thought. What? There's gonna be, be a flirty, flirty. <laughs> Kevin Rudd is Ned Flanders, isn't he? That was his nickname. That's what Fuck his par- his kids used to call him, Ned Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know he and was. And he used religious. to respond all the time to their messages Darkly, with Darkly, Darkly. Darkly. Yes. And if you yeah. see pictures of him as a young man, it was that. Mm. He yeah. had the same hair. Did the he same make that public? Mustache. Has he made his religious um, uh, persuasions pub- like really public of how much he's yeah. into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it's only an asset. You can't go wrong with that in Australia. But I swear that it's more credence to Miss Love's thought of when I think of the atheists in my life, it's that guy saying, All right, here's my charity. My friend has an exam tomorrow. I'm going to wake him up by punching him in the head <laughs> and then pouring gin in his mouth. So that's that's a uh, atheist charity. And then Kevin Rudd was just like, yeah, I went into a fucking soup kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit of a difference. By the way, guys, we we received... Feeding receive you soup or feeding you spirits? The audience think that's a bad take. What? Thinking that atheists are not charitable or anything of that That's sort. a bad take. That's well, a bad maybe because like half of them would be. True, and I maybe, was until I mean, maybe. Nah, I really think that if you look at it statistically, I bet you Christians do more charitable acts than I, atheists. I, I would have to agree with that, dude. Like, here's the thing: I don't have any I evidence for Muslims, it. I'm just saying. I'm guessing. I think yeah. Muslims do the most charitable act. They do a lot of other Wouldn't bad disagree. shit, but they pro- they do a lot of charitable acts and shit. Yeah, I reckon. I've been, so. I've been never given a bun- bunning snag when I'm Muslim. <laughs> Your charity Or a pork sausage <laughs> well, What charity do you mean? Like all sorts of shit You know there's like a compulsory tax on Muslims as well That's supposed to go to like 2.5% of your wealth every year Is supposed to go to like charity I thought it was more In than Pakistan that. It's more Depends on like um how much you earn and what you earn from Interestingly if you <laughs> And this is according to Muslim rules if you earn your money through mining or someone like uh, Gina Reinhardt, every year one fifth of your wealth. God, wouldn't it be amazing really? if we had yeah. that kind of wealth getting taxed off our mining? <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, <laughs> you don't even need. They figured out tax in what one thousand AD. Mm. I mean, no, how are we still six, getting six, it right? Seven, I mean, six seven hundred AD. Well, you know, they're probably that. That's evening out the things they still haven't got right. <laughs> <laughs> that levels them out of it. Such ass. Hey, hey, like I said, I've, I've allowed Miss Love <laughs> one Muslim joke a pod now. And so if you want to exhaust your quota, uh, then do it now. But no Okay, more. fine, fine. Boiled eggs? <laughs> yeah. Very good. I don't, I don't know if that man... He'd have to be Muslim, wouldn't he? I wish. Yeah, he'd I'd be, be so weird if he's just like, no, dude, have you read The Selfish Gene? <laughs> Why do you think I'm so fascinated by the egg? It is the source of all life. <laughs> That's why I was asking if you wanted one. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, Muslims don't drink, so they don't pay one fifth of their incomes in tax that way. True that. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. The Western uh, blight, right there. It is an expensive uh, addiction, <laughs> isn't it? It's brutal. Well, actually, Ulus has contradicted me and said, actually, Christians are the most charitable per capita. Thank you. But also the richest. Yeah, look, there's, there's definitely yeah, a lot to be said. Figure. 
There's mm. definitely just a lot, yeah, a lot to be said for like you know, I mean that that's what a lot of the people say to me, just sort of like the you know the Vatican is lined with gold. It's like yeah, I understand the the hypocrisy there, but it's a beautiful city, and I, I really just don't see. I don't know. I'm kind of dubious that anyone would be given like a a uh, and they do do some charitable charitable acts, but you know, be given a city paved with gold and been like, that's fine. We'll uh, you know. Just turn into a car park. I just don't see anyone on earth just. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? What do they I'm just want saying. I'm just that saying. Goal it's, to go to. It's well, I don't know, but I'm just saying. Like, it's just so. There's so many of those situations where someone's like, it's so easy to be like, this is so wrong. It's like I just wonder if you would do anything different. You personally, the person mm. said, would you do mm. anything? Mm. I, I don't know. <coughs> Maybe they would. Wait, what's wrong? I was well, just yeah, the the question of people looking their noses down on other people. Well, but but also the, the you know the hypocrisy of the Vatican, you know. Yeah, but what do you think about um, Miss Love? Because this is a this is a good question to ask someone who is somewhat believe uh, well, at least identifies as Christian. Right? I don't even know. Yeah, I, but what, what do you think about like all of these um, <coughs> tax dollars that go to um, Hillsong? Yeah, Hillsong and stuff. Not like a fan. Churches. Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan at all. But Hillsong is. Lame. Hillsong is just a bad club. <laughs> it's a club. Yeah. It's a it's a nightclub. I've yeah, been. Yeah, it is not. Right. It's a, and, and I, apparently they do. Apparently, I mean, look, it's a tax haven. They they make a lot of money. I think it's wrong. They do donate some of their money to like charities in Africa and stuff. But like, dude, they're keeping most of it. I'm sure. I'm sure they are. And I think that's yeah. I think that's not cool. I think that's lame. But I think that that's like that's the Scott Morrison. You know, I like this sort of like, you know, half of it for me is the architecture of beautiful old European churches. It's like, it's a place you go in those and you can't help but feel some sort of reverence and peace and reflection. And it's kind of like meditation. Go to Hillsong or whatever. You know, I, I've been peace to one of those. Peace is not the right word. No, it is not peace. And like, that's the ScoMo's version of like Christianity, which is creepy and really weird and really and, and removed i, I think, was from always of the opinion look as long as, as before we moved into this mega church era yeah, when strange. you had like local community churches i like the idea of them being tax-free because more than a sort of spiritual center it was also just a social center for people absolutely to interact every sunday you meet and it you want to facilitate yeah. that yeah but now that like all of that is being congo- like corporatized. cities it's being corporatized, corporatized and yeah. so it's just a money-making institute absolutely now. totally it's the fucking um, and because if you if you go to those if you go to those things they're like these super centers in like borkham hills and they're just middle class kids and and people going there and it, it's it's really Look, I'm not saying that there's not some people that it's, it helps them do less, like, n- you know, caps. And, like, I'm sure if there's one thing Hillsong's probably done that's good, it's just, like, shaving a generation of would-be lads in the Hills districts. But it's, like, that's not really that much to be proud of. I don't know. But, you know, there are, like, now Hillsong... Like other mega churches, which are gaining prominence, it's an Americanized thing. I don't like. It's so American. I don't like that corporate. It's gross, man. It's Wait, weird. Hillsong started in the U.S., right? No, I actually it started, started in New yeah. Zealand. I thought it was in Australia. No, I thought a- it started in the hills. No, it actually started in New Zealand. How are you that. such a scholar on Hillsong? At one point, I just went deep down the rabbit hole with Hillsong, like reading about it. Because it fascinated me. I was like, what is going on with this? And I Wait, just, so you also, I think you told me that Gloria Jeans, the coffee chain, is owned by them? Yeah, no, no, no. Gloria Jeans, something like 30% of their, uh, or 20% of their revenue goes to Hillsong. Yeah, I think they own them. It's, As is virtually every apartment around it. Yeah, it's what? a Hillsong? huge... They have... Do they expect... I wouldn't be surprised if they own a third of the apartments in Sydney. How come, how come like... Nah, all like, yeah, but, you know, they blocks. Yeah. They have entire... Building. That what do they do with it? Just an investment thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just a pretty corporation. Damn good yeah, right? pretty good. An apartment block. Yes. Yeah. Actually, funnily enough, that's bad investment because it's the only kind of property that's not increasing in price. Side note: Is him. that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> his level of expertise and mine coming together finally. <laughs> but that's um, crazy. How? Why do you allow? Why? Well, not you. Why do you personally allow that? Why do we allow? Um, I understand why tax dollars go to them because it's like a community thing. Most of Bella Vista is owned, owned by, by Hillsong. Hillsong. What the hell's Bella Vista? It's one of those suburbs. It's just like. Yeah, it's just a two-hour trip on the M2. It's one of those, you know. Oh, right, okay. 
got a target. Is there any point visiting here? Fuck no. <laughs> Your grandma's probably there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so true. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so to answer her house, you do not want to visit. <laughs> but to answer that question, yeah, I'm not a fan of those at all. Like you said, I think originally, <clears throat> you know, and obviously there's the, you know, there's the, there's, the, there's. Look at any religion. There's just a, there's just this ocean of blood from like the Crusades to. I mean, it's just obviously, it's just like I'm not saying <laughs> there's a there's a vast history of blood following religion, but you know, there's also there's, there's a, it was also intertwined with with history, and there's a lot of positives that came like reading and writing, and you know, I know you always I I, I empathize with that point, and mm. I know that you always make that point. Mm. Uh, it's a very common Jordan Peterson point. It's true, but just for Christian speaking countries, you know that, right? It's right, not yeah. that it paved way for writing for everyone. No, no, I know that, but like, yeah, that, but that, that's still the Dark fun. Ages were called the Dark Ages for a reason. Man. But apparently, the Dark Ages get, got a bad rep, and they weren't that bad. <laughs> I'm sick of all this revisionist history. Of, hey, you know all the shit country of history? They were mad, <laughs> and all the legends sucked. <laughs> that is okay, but, <laughs> very but it's okay. like you think. Stop my! I thought Winston Churchill was but, a good guy. Stop yeah. fucking. But to me. make it even, to bring it even more on a, on a level of like grassroots, small, social, like modern scale, like you said, man, like a lot of those churches that are community based, like anything that's grassroots, like you said, they usually like uh, house homeless people, like social systems for people that are really poor and struggling. You know, like I don't know, single parents. Like it's a pl- it help they help people generally that are like down and out and. Any any but religion, Hillsong any religion, to do the same, you know. And look, to a degree, they might, but I think yeah, there's something about it that's uh, there's something about old school churches that seem more working class. Hillsong is not working class. They're wearing like Gucci and they've got it's video middle clips. Class. Yeah, it's middle class. They got like they got like it's, everyone it's, there does something to do with computers for their job. Yeah, it's mm. very um, it's very. This is corporate. I'm sorry, but you don't go to like... Smells like obsession for men. When yeah, you like you don't go to like, uh, you know, Five Dock, some church in Five Dock and think corporatism. The, the priest can barely speak English. There's no corporatism happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just in the details. All right, well, we're almost uh, done with our pre-show and we have taken zero questions. Oh, so yeah. go on. What have you got We've got ask? three minutes. Church of Butter Chicken. Jesus Christ. I should what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Roman Catholic... Or is greater than all other denominations? Uh, I don't know, man. No, he's right. For the same reason that Miss Love pretty much likes it, which is that, oh, the churches are pretty sick. <laughs> I think they're Case right. Closed. Is, what else do you need? Yeah. Uh, okay, here's a long question. I'll risk reading it. Hopefully there's nothing Pantera in it. But secondly, it, uh, is a question for the pre-show. Recently, I've picked up some work doing 9 to 6 a.m. shift at a Kiwi Woolies equivalent. I was wondering if you boys had any advice for a youngish early 20s bloke for chat with the normies I work with. Do you have any good stories from when you were coming out of your shell socially in workplaces or whatever, specifically for Ali? Uh, there is a 30-year-old Paki dude who is just finished his PhD in physics and he gives me a ride home. So obviously he's a super smart guy. Um, he's asking us how to be social. Well, you clearly could con- answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, good burn. It was so true. Good burn. <laughs> but Miss you Love- my advice? <laughs> Have no human contact <laughs> apart from what you see here. <laughs> Make your life and the true the show. the time, demand you make me fish. And that's the closest thing I have to a conversation. Actually, you know, I have a very, I have, I, I have a very oh, similar shit. take on it as well. If you really think that they're that normie, then maybe find other friends that do stimulate you. Because what am I supposed to, I, you, I can give you tips of like how you can be friendly with them. And you can, but mm. what I'm saying is like, is that a waste of time? I reckon it's lower your expectations. <laughs> when you're hanging out with those people... Normies are pretty fun. whatever they talk... Exactly. Normies are pretty what fun. What are they going to talk about? Netflix. So you just sit there and like Lisa Simpson going, shut up, Breen. I don't need you yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Netflix is cool. Yeah. It's I all think that's yeah. what you want. You just want to... Uh, I think it's always... Anytime you're ever meeting a, a stranger... 
lower your expectations of what you want that conversation to be. That's a good point. And after that, that's everything's a, a bonus. Because I know a great, <laughs> that's actually a pretty cool point. I know Jordan's strategy. <clears throat> Miss Low, I don't understand you because you just are super social. So you do it in a way that you don't have to think about it. I think I do Both what he just m- said, though. No, but Jordan's thing is, whenever Jordan meets someone new, normie, fan, whatever, non-friend kind of in social interaction, Jordan is always extremely impressed by whatever the other person has to say. So they'll be like, oh, and then I went this, and I got it for $10. So Jordan's reaction would be like, yeah. 10? No. But you're, 10? Not, but you're not really, are you? I don't know if it is or is Can you really it? be impressed by someone getting something for 10 bucks? <laughs> <Why, laughs> no, well, you can. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, Ali. Yeah, on the yeah, other yeah. hand, I don't know if Ali's actually impressed by anything. Well, that's the thing. My strategy is different, and I'm going to reveal this. Uh, what, it's to it's be unimpressed no, by everything. A little bit. Pretty shitty if you did. Well, yeah, well, that's a great way to be impressed. <laughs> but I don't do it as much anymore. But I used to do this a lot when I did care about socialization, all of those things. Is to um, basically actually listen to what the other person is saying, uh, and then say something in response to it that makes them think, oh, he's a sick cunt or like he's a smart guy. That's what I used to do. Huh? What? It's stupid, but that's... So I don't get l- let's it. Say yeah, I, I just met you for the first time, right? Yeah. Role play. Um, I would listen to whatever you have to say uh-huh. and then think of something that would enhance the conversation, but at the same time make you think that I'm a sick person. And I am also like intelligent, because that's the only thing I could do. What? So, okay, I can't be says, like, like Joe I Rogan. I bought a watch, and you're like, "Well, I have a better watch. <laughs> no, no and not that. I know how it works. Not that. I'm not telling you. Not that. But like, yeah, <laughs> I would be pretty impressed by someone saying that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, what is it then? Someone well, says, okay. "Okay, give me uh, yeah, let yeah, me let's do it, let's do it. I have a watch. Like, that's really cool, man. But do you have time? You should probably think, uh, don't you think we live in a world where we're obsessed with material stuff? But like, I, I'm glad that you're really interested in watch because- Jesus, no wonder you and my old Jewish neighbor get on so well <laughs> despite you not being able to set foot in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> As you should be. That is just an endless loop of those two yeah. talking to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Jordan. you may as- <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> Why is there a man breaking into our into your room? Sorry, go on. Yeah, that really would be the human equivalent of two roosters that are in <laughs> a separate pen crowing at each other. <laughs> Just never stop. <laughs> <laughs> two philosophers. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I might want, I do want to say this. My strategy is good, but you've got to understand it's exhausting. Because every time you are in, and I can't escape out of it. Every time I was in a social setting, it was like I was acting on stage. It was a character. It was a strategy. It was never like it was never a very wholesome conversation until you actually became friends with them. And so you yeah, but that's a very you and me problem, I think, yeah. and this guy's problem. For sure. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. But I guess most of these people would be like us. I the thing is, I think Miss Love enjoys more talking to you know some spanish guy on the street i like it like, you know sandwich yes i <laughs> like names yes i think my initial reaction is the same as everyone which is our evolutionary reaction which is like stranger stranger danger but i think that goes pretty quick and you just try to find something to be intrigued about and then just be interested in I suppose it's a i don't know it's a mix of what everyone you know it's a mix of what you two said too it's like you sort of I don't think about it that consciously, but you, yeah, you, you obviously have to be engaged and like you said, sort of react. Like if someone says something, you just go like, eh, it's not going to go well no matter what. So like, obviously, I'm, I think I'm a mix of both of you two. No, you're I reckon, not a mix of us. No, you I am. You are a I separate am. entity. No, I think that you're like too, probably like too, ha- uh, too harsh and you're too nice. Like someone's like, like I've no, you do that, I've noticed where like, you know, you'll be too harsh, I reckon. But then like, you'll be talking to someone and be like, you're like, what, are you up to? what have you been up to? And then the guys are sort of like, well, I woke up out of bed. And you'll be like, woke up out of bed? Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Woke up out of bed. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Did you, did you do that a lot? 
It's like <laughs> that is what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's too, not the Jordan too. method. It's the Japanese sushi shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's cool. You're being oh, trying to be nice. You like a lemon, but I kind of want to. Yeah, yeah. But I kind of do want to see you one day. I, I caught. I kind of am dying one day to see you. Someone just to be like, hey man. Uh, like something, uh, you know, I don't know, like God bless all of you, you know, and God bless all the fans, but like someone a little more inept about <laughs> interacting socially. So I'd be like, hey man, uh, John Howard is shit. And I'd love for Jordan one day to be like, yeah, 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 he is. And like, don't you reckon? He'd be like, yeah. You thought of that yourself, did you? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, mate, look, all the best, champ. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> Be no, so that's, harsh, that's, that's but it'd be so funny for me to see because <laughs> he's so nice. Dude, I'm not Rosso. I, I know it. it'd be so great to be like, ah, oh, good on your champ. Yeah, yeah. What do you do again with your day job? Uh, computer analyst. Yeah, don't quit that, mate. For the love of God. Nah, you're all right, mate. Anyway, see you, mate. It'd be so funny. And I then, suppose uh, it's the equivalent of you <laughs> out of nowhere. Someone comes up to you and says, "Hey, man, big fan. I even like Forest Hall." And you just getting out a cigarette and going. <laughs> All right, last question. Oh, oh, putting oh, out, putting out a cigarette. Looking at their eyes while doing it. <laughs> putting a cigarette oh, out. That's such horrible. a move of dominance. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. Ah! Yeah, it'll teach you for supporting me. <laughs> <laughs> Walking away. Album coming out November 6th. <laughs> Fuck, that was my last smoke. <laughs> all right, fellas. I'm sure all your questions we'll, were answered. <laughs> we'll come back after the break with the main pod and we'll be talking about Jordan's video and all of that stuff. <laughs> Welcome to the Friendly Geordie's podcast. Okay. Miss Love <clears throat> is uh, <clears throat> going to show you a special trick. Wait, wait, let me put the camera wow. on first, first. He's exhaling. He's exhaling. <laughs> Look at him go. It's like one of those smoking monkeys wait. that Lionel Hutz gives out. What about this music? I got a head rush. Oh, that was even He's sick. Breathing. Fucking you can breathe weird. out too. So this is going to be a really informative podcast. It's going to be these two trying to blow rings. We're, we're not going to do it anymore. Yes, we are. Um, hey, <laughs> don't lie. It's not over yet. At the end of this pod, this is going up someone's member. And I think we all know who that is. Ah, who you are, like. Please me. Please me. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, the God. perfect shape. Um, <sighs> okay. How are you all? I'm just How going to put it, it up there. Come out. How's Just everyone going? Banana people. That's okay. That, enough of the banana. Uh, everyone's going great. Let's move to our first topic. Everyone's been extremely excited to hear about this, Jordan. Give me that. Mm. What has po life post Bruz the Eternal been like for you? I've been really sleepy. I <clears throat> don't really look at my socials, but everybody is saying, man, it's going off. Everyone's talking about it. But you just expect this after a while. You know what I've realized? I'm so tired of reactions, whether they're positive or negative. Yeah. Just after a while, it's just the same thing over and over. That was mad. Oh, you went too far on that <laughs> one. I don't know if I agree with you on this one, Geordies. <laughs> so I just, look, I'm here to say I don't read your comments. <laughs> Dude, that, you got to pay the That's man. That's a bit harsh. No, but you got to pay the man. Like, no, no, I understand. Look, I we both of us know his life really well. Yeah, yeah, and we know how, it's, it's in order funny. to be sane, you have to do it. It's just funny that it's like, how many reactions, how many variety of reactions can you elicit? And it's like, those are the only reasonable ones. But it's just like, okay, what's your personal opinion? You thought it was good and then, but you went a bit far. Okay, what about yours? You thought it was good, but I went a bit even further. Okay, what's yours? You think I didn't go too far? Okay, <clears throat> what's yours? Just thought it was good? Okay. Oh, maybe too far. Oh, look, I'll get back to you to see if you thought it was too far. What do you think? It was It was good, not too far? Uh, no, it wasn't too far. What do you... You know what I mean? Like, it's... Yeah. <laughs> it's Having all said objective. that, the one comment that I cared about was Isaac, but... See, I was on the news, didn't care what their response was. I assumed that it was, uh, is Jody McKay distancing herself from friendly Jordy? <coughs> is Channel 9 being mean to Gladys Berejiklian? No. I assumed that was theirs. 
The only one that I actually cared about was the real news, which was the butch man <laughs> sending me a text going, that was fucking mad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Dude, why all the hate for that man? Yeah, Buttfield is also a mad cunt. Yeah. Pardon me. There's a real guy getting to the bottom of things. I don't know what his most recent thing was. Something about, like, watch all this gay time shit. What the fuck? <laughs> Why are you tuning into my in uh, exclusive coverage of the Deputy Premier's corruption? That's the real corruption. <laughs> but, well, I look, I don't know. I've, I, got, I, I've I, got a question. I know I, I'll, I'll guide it to this. Is there any part of you that's scared? Of what's happening next? <clears throat> yep. No. Because Even a little bit. I'm scared that he's not going to sue. <laughs> because, man, you know what suing is? Just more of these ball keychains getting circulated. Which, by the way, available at friendlyjordies.com. Uh, interesting story about How this. How offended would you be? Ali, come on. If someone just made a keychain of you with some testicles. I think it'd be. Would that give you the shits? Yeah. I don't know. I think I'd be like, I've made it. Yeah, I'd like You reckon? It. You'd be into this. Yeah, it's so funny. I'd be like, come on. Man, you gotta, you, you it's have to, pretty offensive. It is, but it, 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 you have to just take it. You just have to be like, it's a joke and it's a funny joke. I'll take yeah. it. See, this is the thing that no one was paying what I hear in the news. Really, the, the, the six o'clock news segment should have been that. Don't you think? Just putting that on air for five minutes straight. Mm. No commentary, just circling it <laughs> over and over again. What? what do you mean, Which, a video? By the way, according to Jordan, and this is a true story, because I got the um, the keychains and the designs made or whatever, um, Jordan was of the impression, was of the firm belief that these keychains are worth so much more <laughs> than they are. Yep. And, I thought and we were getting fleeced. Look, the, the fact of the matter is these keychains... Do exist because we are scared that we were gonna we're gonna have to fork up hun- thousands and thousands of dollars in legal fee. So you understand why they're overpriced, oh, but at the same I didn't time, know that. yeah, it's a piece it's, of memorabilia. It's, well, it's just for, a fund. It's pretty uh, much just a token saying that you're supporting the cause. Oh, of one of the richest men in Australia gotcha. suing me. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit late of, in the party of the company I work in, but I, I'm, I'm now I get it. But Does explain the neck beard? N- nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> well, how does that explain the neck beard? Does that mean I'd be like well, on it's 4chan? It's just so amazing that I haven't seen you for 10 days and your first response was, why didn't you tell me that I've got a neck beard? I, I really don't know how to answer that uh, because well, like, think that's long how and hard. space-time continuum <laughs> works. <laughs> I'm not the same as you. I don't have extra sensory powers. <laughs> I know that if I grew a neck beard, you would wake up in the middle of the night and be like, uh, uh, maybe think about shaving it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is I'm pissed off that I can grow a neck beard. It's like, fuck you, God, if there is a God. Why you know? are you pissed? Do you know a lot of people get like hair transplant on their beards because they want to have a thicker beard? No. Yeah, but not yeah. on their neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not on their neck. Can you imagine? <laughs> Just on the neck. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yuck. Oh. This is all shame. All right, let's do that. No. <clears throat> if we get... No. Yeah. If we get to, say, a 99% Why did I bring it up? in a vote saying, should Miss Love <laughs> shave all of his facial hair except for the neck... We'll go to a short break. We'll make him shave it. He can come back. We don't even have sh- shearers. Th- this shit's not going to come off with a fucking... Um, that's not- Look, but what if we have <laughs> 10 razors? Because I did go away no, for a while. I've got a lot of really listen, shit Listen, beats. listen, listen. This is what we'll do. I'll, I will. If that, this is the, the olive branch. Please. The olive branch is yeah. I'll wait till next week. And then sh- bring a shaver, and then I can shave no, this one. No, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. There's no way. <laughs> I'll cut my fa- no. It's I've I've tried to do it with the beard, and it's like, it's no, it's not going to happen. It's like long, painful. <laughs> I no. So you'll come back, and you'll have a bunch of pieces of tissue paper on your face. <laughs> yes. Where's the downside? It hurts for me, not for you. Yeah, but you got to suffer for your art. Yeah, I thought you and were let's a Christian. Let's be honest, that is your art. Dumb I, radio prank. Yes, <laughs> but I, can't, I don't, don't want to suffer that much. Suffering through success, I have my limits. Uh, 
you're really uh, letting what I assumed was your occupation in life, which is musician <laughs> slash prank monkey. Everyone's saying next love, please. Uh, uh, next love. Look, I th- next Mrs. Come early. What do you think about Richard Nixon? <laughs> we'll be getting to that later. No, we won't. We're getting Don't to it change now. The subject. We're getting All to right, it right, now. Yeah, bring it back. I suppose we have to change the subject. We have changed us. the subject, but let's bring it back. Uh, what do you think about? Uh, we did read the Australian article on the video. <clears throat> what do you think of the mainstream media's take on the suing issue? Well, as I'm constantly pointing out, I'm glad that Kevin Rudd is sticking it to Murdoch. But someone has to stick it to nine Fairfax. This is my new go-to line about them. It's the evil of the Murdoch empire combined with the cuntiness of the ABC. <laughs> What's to like? Wait a sec. And isn't it... Wait. No, no, that's The Guardian, right? That's The, the Guardian and Fairfax are different things, correct? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just All joking. right. Yeah. Because Ga- the Guardian, it's scary that you are one of the most knowledgeable people about how the press works in the country. Not scary to me, but probably to the rest of the uh, the population. But the he Guardian, has proven, he has said nothing incorrect so far. So bullshit. Is, but, well, the Guardian is separate to Nine Fair. Oh, okay, cool, cool, so cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just but the the media <laughs> reaction. <laughs> Continue your line of thought. It was really a news podcast. Just uh, jumping in there because I was thinking in my mind, I'm like, I don't think Jordan would necessarily tear down The Guardian. So I'm just clearing that up. He should. Uh, except for a few people that write for The Guardian. Well, the fact that it's Malcolm Turnbull's favourite paper, it should say something. Well, really? Turnbull is... Well, are you well, serious? <laughs> you're Isn't it amazing that even though... Nine Fairfax pretty much should just be called the uh, Turnbull Simp Channel. Even he reads it and is just like, mm, bit crap. <laughs> <laughs> Wants to read The Guardian instead? I think he doesn't even agree with The Guardian. I think that Turnbull's doing a sort of like, you know, <clears throat> he's doing a sort of like flip. 180. Of, yeah, he's doing a 180 of just being like, I want people to like me, so I'm going to just talk about climate change a bit. And it's like, it's so, it's, it's just like, dude, it's fucking lame, you know? It's like you, you had a chance whilst you were in power and to just sort of jump on the, this bandwagon now is weak and lame and, you know. And proves everything that the Murdoch press says about him, which is that he is secretly a Labor prime minister. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, look, I think it's... I, think it's I do think that they're apt on that. Well, why couldn't he just be like an openly Labor prime minister <laughs> and join the Labor Party? No one can like. You know why? Why, any, I don't why know does why. no one care about that? That he is such a spineless man that he chose a party based. I'm guessing on a flip of a coin. I don't think it was a flip of a coin. I thought he, he just looked in. at the trajectory and realized, <laughs> hmm, I could be in the Labor Party and be permanent opposition, or I could get my name in the history books that yeah. people will glean over to until there's an actual substantive prime minister. <laughs> but my CV will look even more impressive than it already does. Yeah. You're 65. What job do you want? I have to ask though, like with the <clears throat> with the whole suing thing, again, I'm late to the party. I know I work here, but I'm late to the party. Wait, because yep. you haven't seen the video. <laughs> I haven't seen the video <laughs> yet. <laughs> but, uh, but, but what I, but what I want... <laughs> so obviously his commentary is the most important. <laughs> but no, I, you know, I wanted to ask, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, but the lawsuit bomb was dropped ages ago to us. Hmm. So... Surely, you, like you personally, <clears throat> for us, you know the sort of like the sort of like Don't hysteria, <laughs> hysteria and steam of the situation is not as poignant as it is for the rest of the people. Because I got a few calls from people today, like, "Oh my god!" I'm just like, "What?" And that's old news. Yeah, I gotta go, man. God <laughs> damn, so good. And then us today, just be like, such a tough day. Had udon noodles. You went to the sauna, and now you're dropping this on me. That is no, I'm, I'm trying to relax here. <laughs> this, um. is, this is how I genuinely found out about uh, the 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 letter. I was here, maybe yeah. like what, however many it weeks was ages ago, ago, months yeah. ago, whatever. And I kept my tea on top of a paper, yeah, that's right. and I looked at it. If it's an important <laughs> paper, and I was like, and I wrote my hey, Jordan. Have you are you aware of this? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot to tell you. He's suing us. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
Oh, anyways, what else is going yeah, on? Yeah. And then I proceeded to write the tracking that number. That explains the coffee stain, yeah. Mark. They thought it was blood. Everyone thought it was blood. And it was Me like, no, too. I coffee. thought it was. It wasn't blood. So I remember my nose bleeding and being like, uh-oh, it's going to get worse. <laughs> but hey, Ali, I think you're <laughs> overlooking the fact that I wrote the tracking number for my guitar pedal on there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then ripped a piece out of the front page of it so that he could write down a number when he missed the number that he was supposed to get for his guitar pedal. That's how much Isn't that can. great? So went to South, it came from South Australia, went back, he wrote that down being like, okay, can't miss you. So I'll put it on an important piece of paper to recognise how important it is. Oh, I miss you. Okay, well, I don't see any other way out of this. I'm going to have to desecrate this piece of paper, despite the fact we're in an office. There's many pieces of paper here. It was the closest piece. <laughs> <coughs> But it really goes to show how much we give a shit about like huge things. That but are you know what? I remember telling him, Jordan, you should give a little bit more of a shit about this than I remember you currently that too. are. I remember that too. But like, because look, and that was my lawyer's advice as well. <laughs> Duly noted to both of you. <laughs> Dude, we suck. We we okay. All I'm trying to point out is to everybody watching, because you guys are sort of like you know you're you're not fair weather fans. We're just as funny in real life. We actually, we're not pretending. We don't go like shut the cameras off and be like, all right, optics and uh, lawyers and looking at the deep side of optics and all the angles of lawsuits and what could happen. No, I write my guitar pedal number on it. Yeah, and then we go into, okay, overdrive. What will piss John Barillaro off the most? All right, we'll wait for a public venue, and then we'll I'll dress up as a female super uh, Luigi, female. Um, and I'll start yelling obscenities at him, and then Christo will just not fuck off. When <laughs> all, all of the other guards just jumped on me and pushed me out. That is assault. So there was no one left except for some Neanderthal that was just like, Psh. well, uh, that was plan A. <laughs> but what have I got left? Mm, go away. Let's not forget. <laughs> let's not forget also, nationals like, taking selfies with you. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what happened. Hey, Isn't that amazing? Wearing, that our, wearing the fucking merch. I, I don't think they yeah. were nationals. No, they were nationals because we talked to one of them <clears throat> for some reason. There was a guy that was there that met us when we were going up to Queensland. Christo and I were flying up. He was there on the night and he gave us an inside scoop of what happened after we got booted out, after the guards figured out that Christo was still there annoying him and they dragged him away as well. This guy said that John Barillara just got the mic up. I was like, fuck, what a dick. I mean, hasn't this guy ever heard of Menace? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fucking such a rude cunt. Just went off for like the next half hour while he was supposed to be there doing his stock standard speech of, yeah, I think climate change is happening. I just don't think it's going to be happening now. Relax. <laughs> so it got him off of that. And, <laughs> and uh, this guy was telling us the loyal diehard fans that were there that you – Definitely, it says everything you need to know <clears throat> that when I'm there at a speech that John Barillara is the keynote speaker and I crashed it, everyone's cheering for me. Bizarre, yeah. They come out afterwards and they want to take selfies with me, except for a few crow magnons that clearly want to get a seat in New South Wales Nats at some point. Everyone else was cheering for me. Uh, and then I said, why is that happening? And he said, because... The only reason anyone joins the Young Nationals is because there's a bar tab. Oh. Respect. I mean, that's the only reason. I, I respect that. Of course, Muso goes respect. Go be a member. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I care about regional Australia too. I should join. You do. Don't you reckon? That's a, you know what else is really scary? He was saying that when they were asking questions about what about this regional rail line that you promised, where's that? John Barillaro's stock standard response to anything about infrastructure, environment, educational health is, that's Labor stuff. Shut the fuck up. I, what, what am I, the Labor Party? Why are you asking me about trains? So what's he interested in? I think he's interested he wants to be in a chef. getting more fucking money for himself. 
Allegedly. I don't think he has. Allegedly, I don't know, but he defers all nice. of the governing things to the opposition party and says, right. well, why don't you ask them? Because they're in opposition, dude, and you're the guy that's supposed to sign off on these things. Yeah. And I don't think that he understands that. I was talking to another person that uh, was saying that they had to sit next to John Barillaro in a conference. Mm. And I said, what is he like? And he said, dumb as fuck. Because he was saying the same things. Every time they said, what's your plan for New South Wales? He'd stare at them with a blank face. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the second most powerful man in the state, making all the decisions. A man that is physically incapable of making decisions. Just a thought. Can we get sued as well? <laughs> <laughs> um, can we get sued as well? No. Oh. Yeah, you haven't said anything. Both of you are just nervously glancing yeah, around while I'm yeah, yeah. sitting <laughs> here <laughs> with a <laughs> mad gavel. <laughs> guilty, <laughs> guilty. Put him to the gallows. But he would have Despite fed, he the fact that we us. have gavels in this uh, studio as well, just using a <laughs> mallet. Like, yeah, old school friendly Geordies, whatever works. Yeah, but what do you mean it could affect us? Why? In different ways. Um, we get a bad Look, let's, rap. let's assume in this crazy world, mm. Barilaro wins the defamation case. He's gonna, they'll put a amount of money that Jordan would has to pay. Jordan doesn't have any assets. Mm -hmm. So they'll <laughs> say all the profits from the enterprises would go to us, which includes our what? livelihoods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So you but two will be working argue. for John Barilaro. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great as part of the settlement? Uh, he just comes in every week. And does the pod with you guys. <laughs> oh <laughs> my sick. god. So uh, the queen's dead, huh? Oh, that's sad. She was a nice lady. <laughs> hey, that picture of me is a bit crooked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, it's time for the Barrel Arrow Cooking Hour pork chops this week. <laughs> Fuck, I'd be into it. Yeah, that's a great pod. Yeah, <laughs> I'd just be like, I like I'll, I'll make the au jus, mate. I brought the wine. But they replace Ali as the brains of the group with that <laughs> Neanderthal saying, like, Leave us alone! So you're just hanging oh, out with those shit. two? And let's be honest, you would prefer it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like my new friends. Yeah, it's true. Fuck. All right, yeah, well. look, in summary, all I'll say is that I think what's new, that guy's a moron, which is why you're suing a comedian with no assets. It's amazing. It's just like... Do you have a content generator? The smart thing to do was <laughs> yeah. to just pretend that I don't exist. Yeah. Now, that genie is out of the bottle. Mm. I can't advise you any further at this point, and I think that I'm giving you <laughs> the best advice out of your entire legal team that just want to make money and are trying to get somebody who has no money yeah. sued. Mm. So is this What happens at that point? It would just be like John Barillaro versus a stone that has no blood. So is this the same scenario... Again, I know I work here, but is this the same scenario as uh, as uh, Clive? Is it just verbatim the same <laughs> in regards to in regards to? No, I think the the uh, the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for the uh, legal repercussions? Yeah, yeah. The no, the fuck what they're suggesting you've done. Like, is, there, is it just going to be going to play out the same way? The accusations. Yeah, it's the same exact was, kind of case. So it's the, the same, same accusations, case, but dumber because it's John Barillaro instead of Clive. Because with Clive, it just fell through where it's like, no, it's not defam defamation. Right? Yeah. No, it didn't go through that. It's just that <clears throat> the other thing is, first of all, like defamation legislation has a very specific satire clause that if it's a satire, it's not defamation. Yeah. Which is essentially all of Friendly Geordie's yeah. enterprise is satire. Yeah. And the other thing is, imagine you go into a courtroom. On the on one hand, you have one of the most powerful, one of the richest people in the country mm. who hold public office, get paid by taxpayer money, by people like us, suing a comedian <laughs> that's talking about uh, special extinction. Do you think... That's going to go down well with the judge. Well, My guess is the judge will be sympathetic <laughs> towards Jordan. <laughs> really? Yeah, 100%. Unless it's an extremely serious allegation yeah. that is completely unfounded, See, because, yeah. not based on satire, but mm. a genuine thing. The thing is, like... I've and let's <coughs> be honest, I'm going to push for a jury. I'm not going to leave it to a judge. Right. So I'll, I'll have 12 random members of the public saying, hey, do you think it's a good idea that this man 
brags about his corrupt dealings, yeah. brags about deliberately propping up electorates that favour him. Mm. Do, you, do, you, do you like that? Mm. Do you like the fact that this guy doesn't care or seem to understand that he is responsible for a thousand species on the endangered list? Mm. You think that that's a responsible thing? I yeah. suppose, you know what it really... I should just walk in with dressed as the Joker and be like, okay, well, <laughs> shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Empty your pockets, Mr. Shanks. One thing of flint, a pocket knife, a single Joker card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, he is the fucking Joker. He is. Look, Heath Ledger. Well, and, yeah, look, at the end of the day, with very limited understanding <laughs> of defamation lawsuits from my end, yeah. I am. if someone was to put odds onto who's going to win this case based on the facts, I would give... 90% of Jordan and 10% of Barilaro. And what I, we were looking at the defences for defamation. All of them are in my favour. Mm. Satirist, honest opinion. It is my honest opinion that he's a stupid, fat idiot. I, I genuinely do think that. I know that's shocking. Yeah. I know it might not even be grammatically correct. Which is hilarious that he is suing me for something that, like, he's not even pointing out how dumb the insult is right. to begin with. He's yeah. genuinely offended by that. And I will also be pointing out in the lawsuit that any time there was a fact, the fact was extremely damning on him that he didn't seem to understand it was. And he got a lot of those facts wrong, misrepresented any of that. So, didn't spell Labor correctly, meaning that not only does he defer <laughs> no, everything to the opposition when it comes labor. to rail, yeah. He did that. I but the thing labor. that he did get correct was every one of my insults to him. Mm. So really, all he cares about is that someone was calling him names. Yeah. And he's sitting around saying, what What do you mean? I'm allowed to make as much money as I like and fuck over an enti entire ecosystem. It's not just one, all of them. And you're not allowed to be mean to me. Okay? Is that the law? Oh. Is, is that the, the society we live in? Shit. Because you check. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is a perfectly uh. fair opinion to have. <laughs> but Everyone goes crazy. Sorry, go it's on. a fair opinion to have if you're not in public service. Mm. <laughs> you can't be a person that's responsible for the livelihoods of the most populous state in the country and then be sensitive. Mm. You, like, it, it's like being a celebrity and then being mad at the fact that there's paparazzi outside, you know? It's really strange. If you wanted to be liked and, truth be told, on a personal level, I do like John Barillaro a lot because every time I look at him, I think, Yilmaz. <laughs> Yilmaz if he was Deputy Premier. Pretty much. Don't you reckon? Yeah. But it's just like, dude... Just be a TikToker. Be a YouTuber. Don't be in charge of a state. Yeah, he should just That's do a crime. Like, you're an idiot, and you would be very famous and loved if you were just Spanian 2.0. Or just do just a cooking like, show. Yeah, okay, rural logic. <laughs> Say you want to buy a giant mansion, but you don't have enough money for no, the no. mansion. You should get some favours. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> what if the, what, what if the uh, judge is a lib plant? And the judge is is just a fucking paid off by the gnats and the libs, and they put you away. They they do you in, which would be extremely likely. Which is definitely why we would be going to a jury. Well, that's not but up to the you. The other thing is, nah, I stand you, by. You can review cases. It's that's not up to you though. I I don't think to the jury. Yeah, that's up to me. What? Well, I get to determine if I wanted to go to a I judge or a jury. Oh, you could have a jury in defamation cases, but I might be wrong about Shit. that. Shit. Well, I don't know. It's just that's what my defo lawyer was saying. Yeah, well, Definitely if he's saying it, then, then you could. Yeah, and yeah. we will just be wheeling out that video of me being like, oh, his face is on some nuts. So the jury sits there. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's they're no just way. They're going to laugh it out of you. court. But uh, Plus, the main yeah. takeaway is, look, even if I do get sued for every penny that I have, I don't care. Yeah, that's this your, is my that's overarching, most angry point, as always, is the press. I expect John to be an idiot. And I find that kind of just fun, interesting fodder to attack. And I think that we've done enough to, uh, you know, draw attention to how bad the nationals are, particularly on a state level. The thing that angers me so much more is all of these journalists that know he's bad and will protect him to mm. earn money. Yeah. And the best defence that they have, the thing that they say to make themselves sound good, 
is that we don't want to be sued despite the fact that they have defamation insurance. So, so that's that's Jesus. worth that's worth these going extinct. Yeah, Fuck. arbitrary figures in bank accounts that don't really exist. It's yeah. just there on a computer screen, and you don't want to see that number go lower. <laughs> and that's you being a good uh, person. Fuck. And if any of the barrel arrows. That's so angry. And also, also, also attacking <sighs> the guy that actually has the balls to say. You're a bad person for making animals go extinct. Instead mm. of attacking the guy making them go extinct, attacking the guy doing that because they don't like the fact that he drew, dressed up in a Luigi costume. Such evil people uh, for a dollar. Yeah, it's not. That's that's a that's that's you really can't. You know, uh, but you know, it's serious shit. You can't. It's it's sad, <laughs> and it you know the the man's right. But there, but you, well, I think <clears throat> I want to make you realize this. They're wired differently to you. Like I, when Jordan says this, I don't care about every penny. I can assure you, he does not. Like he's been he, poor a long, he, lot longer. No, it's not that he doesn't. He doesn't like having money or the idea of Come being on, able to have he money. He doesn't. But he <laughs> he doesn't need money. He's not motivated by it a single bit. No. In fact, well, out of the three of us, <laughs> the Kami is probably the most motivated by it. <laughs> How crazy is that? The guy wearing red and the libertarians just like, lentil is anything, you pay whatever you want. <laughs> but to be fair, if, if anyone's motivated by money, Friendly Geordie's is not the place, you know? No. So it's it, all, everyone in the staff of Friendly Geordie's is not strictly motivated by money. No but these way. guys, I, who th these guys find like the journalist that you're referring to, they find value in themselves. Like you find value in the fact that you have made the world a slightly better place, that you are exposing certain dodgy dealings that need to be exposed. That's what- Let's be really, he cares eco-fascist. He cares about the environment e and sustainability. Yeah, and the fact and that if, if that one extra sure frog- by 10. Yeah. If that one extra frog <laughs> survives, it makes you happy. Like yeah. I'm of the opinion it's that really they cool. should go frog. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But but that's what really matters to you. Those guys, what matters to them is oh. being able to send their kids to really private school, like expensive private schools, being able to afford a house in a place that's extremely expensive. That they find that's what they think is successful life looks like. Yeah. So And I'm saying that those people are shit cunts. I hate yeah. them so much, yeah. especially because <laughs> it's I fair, kind dude, of under, as when John Barillaro was saying, <clears throat> isn't the whole point of politics to pork barrel? That is a fair interpretation of what politics mm. is. There is no fair interpretation of saying the point of journalism is to cover for corrupt politicians because it makes you rich. Yeah, it's kind of like. Yeah, it's by so it, it's kind of worse because it's allowing it to happen. I mean, you said it pretty well in, in I think it was the yours and ours thing of just being like, you know, the the, the joke about like the mind being like, thanks from the back end, you know, like it's kind of the arm of the the propaganda arm of of the pot. You know, it's almost it's worse because at least he's saying that. You know, it's kind of in a well, way it's too honest. dumb to realize that that's probably something that shouldn't be said publicly. No, but it's actually. In a way, it's cool because it's like, dude, yeah, he's being honest about it. And like the people at City Morning Herald or whatever are not, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think that's the most infuriating yeah. part about it all. Yeah, I can, I, I totally agree with you. I completely agree with you. It's like, and it's cool that I think you're the only person in the country uh, and Michael West, right? Like, it just doesn't seem to be, uh, 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 yeah. Prawny. Oh, prawny. of course. On his. And Fucking of course, <laughs> Paul Murray live on Sky News at 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And Prawny with his uh, hit show from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. regional. Or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> yes. Isn't he getting big? Yeah, he is. Bullshit. Yeah, at a meme value. He's pretty... And he should be because it's pretty much David Kosh no, he radio. Is good. He is good. <laughs> Just in case... The white, more wasn't oily version of Do you think he's swaying the boom? The boom shake shake booms? Uh, yeah, I think that he's getting a... I think that he was starting to build an audience <laughs> off of the back of me of older people that listen to me. Okay. And I think that that's a good thing to counter the 2GB giant, that he's yeah. there at least true. telling it like it is. True, true, Instead true. of just regurgitating what the Murdoch talking points yeah, are for yeah, that yeah. day. But 
<clears throat> look, as we have shown, nine Fairfax, at least to us, and I truly do think that uh, generally for society, nine Fairfax is way worse than the Murdoch press. And at least the Murdoch press is boss. They're kind of like, if you <coughs> double cross us, we will beat your fucking head in. Whereas <laughs> nine Fairfax is just a bunch of whiny private school kids sitting there dobbing on you. Mm. That's their job. <coughs> Prefects that were saying, yes, Jacob, didn't wear a tie today. Yeah. Worse just on that level. But if you zoom out, <laughs> they have been much more aggressive in trying to take us down mm. than the Murdoch press has hmm. because I think that the Murdoch press – more or less sits there and admires the bulls. And they still, think and yeah, the Murdoch that, press would the like fast forward, that, right? We, we are frontal. just, yeah, like I personally like the politicians that the Murdoch press protects more than the politicians that Nine Fairfax protect. I think that the wets are the worst part of the Liberal Party and they deserve to have as much, you know, ire and venom dumped on them as, I don't know, your Tony Abbott's. I truly do believe this. There's so much worse. The ones that say, oh, we believe in climate change. It's just so hard to do anything. Why? Because I want to stay in power. Yeah. yeah. It's, again, it's just an yeah. extension of their ideology which is, of Nine Fairfax, which is no ideology. And I heard it in the Senate hearings. I was listening to Malcolm Turnbull talking about his experience with the Murdoch press, and they were saying, do you feel culpable for this, that when you were in the position to tighten regulation around media ownership, you loosened it? And he said, absolutely not. I think that it was important that there was a media empire that could rival the Murdoch press that could make me look good. And that is exactly what's happened since Nine and Fairfax have merged. They have become a secondary Murdoch empire for the lame faction of the liberals that don't right. even say base shit. Just mm. sit there and tut tut everything. Right. They've gone and <laughs> just become this huge protection racket for the Berejiklians and the Matt Keynes of the Liberal Party. And now that they own 2GB, before when Ray Hadley was by himself, they kind of just let him run loose and he was really damaging to Murdoch's, uh, sorry, to Malcolm Turnbull's mm. prime ministership. <clears throat> Then, when the corruption scandal came out about Gladys Berejiklian, he was originally very critical. But he didn't go on about it for two years straight. He shut up about it about two days in. And that's because now his boss is Peter Costello. That's the shift that's happened. Mm. So I'm really glad that they are the ones attacking me, is what I'm saying in short. Mm. I, I think that it's much better that the Murdoch press is constantly going for Rudd. I want nine Fairfax going for me. Even like when I was Fuck. reading the... Um, <laughs> Splits that. Splits the, it. I, I st we, none of us have seen the nine news clip because we can't find it. Tell us how to find it. We want to see it. But we did read the, yeah, the Australian. The one thing that was... Well, Jordan's reaction was, well, why do you think that's surprising? But the thing that annoyed me the most about their um, reporting of the, the video and so Synopsis. They... they Look, they, they reported it like it is. They said, oh, he's being sued, blah, blah, blah. Threatened to get sued. But the entire discourse in the article was Jordan calls uh, Bruz. Uh, um, uh, he, he, he speaks an Italian accent, which Bruz thinks is racist, and hence Bruz got annoyed, and now there's a suing thing. There is not a single mention about mm. the actual substance, which is the environmental issues that mm. surround all of this. Mm. That it's not that Jordan... You minus the environmental issue, Jordan doesn't care if he's Bruz, Mario, or whatever. So you should at least acknowledge it that mm. the entire focus and the entire beef with uh, the deputy premier is not about the fact that he's Italian. That's a joke. <laughs> it's amazing that well, that he's second year. It's about the fact that his <laughs> Imagine party. Imagine that was your cross the door. Get Italians out of Australia. Fucking hell. Just insane. But it, it, a person that doesn't know anything about the issue, when you read it, they would think that a YouTuber has an issue with the deputy premier because he's Italian. They've skewed it. They've skewed. It's the magnifying glass thing. Be like, just, look what he shared. Well, uh, I mean, Jordan Shake was like, "Yeah, why would you be surprised? Why would they even mention it?" But I was like, 
you know, just you'd expect it. But what just ha- a little bit somewhere. What would know? happen if you just never, if you never went for the angle of like he's Italian or whatever, which I think is genius. But if you didn't do that, would it be the case that they just wouldn't even pick it up? Yeah, of course. They wouldn't I even used to him. rail about John Barillaro destroying yeah. Kosciuszko National Park and just in that one instance putting 27 species on the endangered list. Absolutely nothing. I made fun of him for being Italian. What the fuck? You fuck I can't believe that shit. So, so now bizarre. you've just realised, okay, that's your chink in the armour. I'm just going to pay you guys out for your ethnicity from now on because it at least gets headlines that will then get people back to the point, yeah. which is that these fucks are getting rich by destroying Australia's unique ecosystems. Fuck, dude, You know, at least it gets attention on it. Yeah, fuck, it's so, so, it's so depressing. So, whatever, I'll take that cross. It's, it, it's so ridiculous. Like, it's, I'm sorry, but, like, you know, uh, what are they called? Like, you know, Jordan's favourite show, Auntie Donna. There's a lot of Italian. It's like, I'm going to make a pizza. You know, we're Croatian. I'm fully Croatian. Like, sorry, you're really grasping Wait, do you look straws. down on him because he's a halfy? Yeah, look, Scots are pretty tough, you know. But uh, I'll I'll pay that, you know. He's not like, he's not he's not Anglo. <laughs> but you know, it's like it's like it's 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 just like it's just like come on, dude. Like, is it is it if if what if what if an Italian pays out another Italian? Is that right? This is just nah, ridiculous. It's, look, it, it's, it's the ridiculous. constant deflection, and but it's the so thing is it's that so they ridiculous. Use- yeah, but in- what about fat pizza? Do you watch fat pizza and go? Call the police. It's doing an accent. And it's called fat pizza. This is so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. But I think that up until now, that has been their go-to strategy for character assassination. It's always, <clears throat> uh, okay, let's look into sex scandals. No, no sex scandals. Let's look at something that they've shared. Uh, have they shared anything that we can construe <laughs> as being racist or sexist? Oh, my God, there they are. But mm. they don't understand this point. You live in a universe where politicians are scared of saying anything except for opening up a road in their electorate. But I live in a universe where if you accuse someone of being racist, bam, 400,000 views. It's really beneficial to me to sit there and scare it through everything that I've ever said in my life and then put the worst light possible on it. Mm. Um it's so, it it's only so helps to draw attention to the things that I'm trying to draw attention to. And on top of that, like nine today, I was on the plane, so I couldn't have done it anyway. But I go, I go out and somebody who was doing a story for nine said, yeah, yeah we're doing a report today. Um, we'll, we'll let you talk on it. What's a good time for you? Expecting, like all politicians would have, oh, fuck, I get to be on national news. Dude. Nine News to me is another YouTube channel. Mm. It's a different way of looking at it. And I don't want to collab with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair. <laughs> with Peter Overton. I love that. They, oh, well, you know, I love, I'm only human. <laughs> I love that I saw on a bus, the Peter Overton thing. It was like, it was something like getting to the, like behind the news, the real source that no, you'll get nowhere else. <laughs> Who the fuck are you fooling, dude? I know. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> Who Don't else even try will it. report to you what the price of petrol was today? <laughs> Your dad? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but we have our eye on the sky. A fucking helicopter, not even a, hel- a truck that's usually late. What the fuck, dude? Like, can you, can you, like, stop insulting the population with that? Like, stop insulting everyone. Stop assuming everyone's that fucking stupid, you know? Yeah, well, look, it's, they don't understand this point. I have my own news program now. Mm. I don't need to try and make myself look good in an interview that is designed to be hostile towards me. Dang. It doesn't benefit me. All that's going to happen him. is you mention me. <laughs> I'm just going to rip apart exactly what like your actual intentions and motives were. The old it's model's not going gone. to benefit you. Yeah, the old model's gone. Where it's just like There's you've got things. four minutes, and if you if you you know one eye glance wrong, your career is over. And it's not that. You, Jordan's basically, he looks to me like he's Jim Carrey from the Truman Show that's just realized, hey, 
This guy's a wall. <laughs> I'm not playing this game anymore. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, you are right. That's that's the best way to do it. No, you know what it is? We thought he was uh, Jim Carrey from The Truman Show, but he's actually Jim Carrey on Walking, what is it? Man on the Moon. <laughs> <laughs> What's that guy's name? Uh, what is his name? The, the comedian. I forget. Andy Kaufman. Yeah, Andy yeah, yeah, Kaufman. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's, let's move on from this because uh, we've given, we've talked about it plenty. The next segment is... Every um, people want to know about um, the situation in India, and before we get into this, I want to preface it. Yeah, I better move over by to Jordan for giving this one. some. I think a lot of the reporting of the um, India COVID catastrophe is slightly misguided because there is another aspect that needs to be looked at. So there is no doubt that India is. The, the the cases, the need for medical assistance is just off the chart. It is, it's doomsday scenario over there. But the other- Because it's Donald Trump if he was running a third world country. It's Donald Whoa. Trump, but it's it's more than that. It's, it's not Donald Trump because it's not the US. What I wanna, when we look at India now, particularly when someone looks at the stats, they look at, oh, India, the third richest economy in the world after China and the US. Oh, India, uh, IPL contracts are $3 million. India is a fairly wealthy country. So we put them in the same metric as we would uh, places like the UK when, um, uh, when the cases went up. Here's, here's a bit of a reality check, and I'm, I'm not trying to uh, put down, but it's, it's important to know this. Before the pandemic, mm. every public hospitals, um, there were 0.55 ventilators for every hundred people whoa that from the beginning is horrible so yes the covid situation has gotten worse but it's also in a country that has severely malnourished its health sector for ages the i the the success story of india or the shining india success story is super privatized it hasn't it had the, the wealth hasn't flowed the same way as it has in countries like um, in Australia or even uh, China. Do they have public mm. hospitals? They do have public hospitals, but they are severely malnourished. Under, pandemic yeah. or no pandemic. Mm. They have never, and, and, I'm st and same goes for countries like Pakistan. We are from the, we're basically just brothers. We have severely neglected health education throughout our history. And countries like India, the onus is on them more because they were in a situation where they were growing rapidly. But their health funding has always been abysmal. Even today, after the pandemic, there are calls to allocate 2.5% of the budget to the health sector, which is being considered crazy. Wow. It's insane. Do you know how much we spend on no our much. health sector? Like how much we, we spend a lot of money. It's close. It's around six to seven percent at this point. Uh, not the third. And it's growing, it, but it's, and they don't. They don't private. They don't prioritize it. They never have Modi mm. or no Modi. Even the idea, like, <coughs> and then you have. Here's a flip side of India. Then there are private hospitals which charge exorbitant amounts of money, and you know what? They do have oxygen. You just need to be able to afford it. And most Indians are poor, so they can't so afford India it. India is like really harshly capitalist, like old school. India is harshly capitalist. It has become, the thing was, it was quasi-socialist until the 90s, and it wasn't earning enough money. Then in the 90s, they did some economic reforms, and they became a lot more capitalist. But unlike what I would say was the Chinese model, where they utilized those funds into uh, public sector, India never really did that. India just made a parallel economy where like the private sector just started going insane, where you've got people like Ambani's that live in India that have the richest, or Adani for that matter, that are mm. probably mm. would compare to any billionaire in US, China mm. or UK or Australia. But on the same, like they're, that, the most expensive house in the world is right on top of a slum mm. that India, hasn't even attempted to negotiate with that issue. Anyway, the so LA my, of India. But worse than <laughs> LA, because the US hasn't done it the way India has. The US has invested money into the right, US right. spends more money on their healthcare system per capita than any other country in the world, including us. What? Yes. 
So the yeah, US, but that's a scam. Uh, it may be, but still, Contracts, right? there are a lot more per person per hundred uh, ventilators in the US than there are in. Uh, so what you're in saying India. is it was like a cluster bomb waiting to go off with something like COVID. I, I'm just saying, even pre-pandemic, it was a serious concern. Gotcha. Now it's just insane. It's it's. What are the numbers? The numbers of people that are dying. It's really yeah. bad, eh? Well, we don't even know the numbers because yeah, journalists, journalists, they're saying it's about uh, three thousand people or four thousand people or something every day dying. Yeah, but then, Damn. but then, like, uh, you look at the independent, like, journalists on the ground. They go to hospitals and they tally the numbers of people that are died from COVID, and they go to the uh, the cremation spots, and the numbers don't add up. There's way more people dying. They went to a hospital and asked the person that records all of this, why do you think that is? And he's like, I'm not surprised at all because most people are dying at home. Do you know why? Most people can't even afford to even go to the public hospital because the logistics of it. Dude, they, they don't have the room. They're just dying outside. Apparently they're like cremating people like in the streets and they're just like- Yeah, they're making makeshift crem- crematoriums. Damn. It's like Black Death. It yeah. is like Black Death in a place that is Fuck. never was equipped to handle such a thing. But wait a sec, can I just ask, I thought COVID in terms of globally, this was the, you know, my ignorance, but I thought that it was kind of subsiding everywhere. It was, it was even in America, it was like they were, they were curbing it because it was really bad in America. Maybe it just took a lag time to third world countries because there's not as many flights and not many people go there. I don't know. Well, no, so I don't the know. populations are a bit more contained. What what happened was that, is that not the when the case? first wave came, <clears throat> this is, okay, so now is the incompetence of the current Indian government that comes into the, when the first wave came, India went into one of the harshest lockdowns ever witnessed at that particular time. Later on, we saw lockdowns, but- That's sick, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's not sick for a country where a, that I wouldn't sick. say most of the people, but a My fair God, number so of people depend on <laughs> daily <you> wages. <laughs> Sorry. Every, there were laborers that worked daily and then you impose this harsh lockdown. Do you know people, yeah, there was so they this didn't exodus. Have any job they didn't no, no, no fucking nothing. job keeper oh, whatsoever. Well, dude, but there was an exodus. That's actually very surprising. There was an <laughs> exodus <laughs> for, of, uh, of labor going from cities back to their villages. People assume that that's because the lockdown and they were instructed to do it. No, they were afraid of getting sick in the cities oh my because God. they were like, if we get sick over here, who the fuck is gonna afford medical care? So they would rather go back to their village to essentially die. Uh, that's what they were, they were like, I okay, thought that they just listened to Bill Maher's uh, new rule and saying, you know what is really good for COVID? Going outside. <laughs> And put down the burger. You! So this strategy... Hey, do you think... That, sorry, just as a quick side note. Do you think that if India, instead of increasing its budget that it spends on health to 2.5%, they instead put that money into health programs? In, uh, sorry, not like not health care, but kind of just like, did you know that broccoli is good for you? Dude, Indians are vegetarians. <laughs> yeah, but they just eat dal. Oh, yeah. I'm a huge fan and, of yeah. dal. And a lot but. of potatoes. Oh, yeah, that's not very nutrition. nutrition. No, I think that uh, so yeah. you can increase the budget. It's nature's chips, but that's still chips. <laughs> you can increase the budget in terms of <laughs> social. Pro- so they do have a social program of sort, which is a step in the positive direction, which they called uh, <coughs> Swatch Bhat, which I think means clean India. Because, again, India... Sure, it's the third richest country in the world, but it's also the country that has a huge open defecation issue, which causes diseases every year on its own right. Really? See, that's what I'm saying. If you're that poor, I really don't think that the answer is more ventilators and cat scans. No, it's a, it's no, a it, sub- you definitely need it's ventilators. In a pandemic, you, you need it. Yeah, no, 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 you definitely it's need a, it's them, a but cultural can you them? You're but India. It's a, it's a cultural shift. You know what's a great, and you'll find this interesting. I read this, actually. It was about the uh, you know, Atomic Habits, a book I read. And it was an example about Pakistan. There was a, uh, there was a- You're from there, Ali. That's where you're from. Um, there was, yeah. there was, no, no, it is. And um, um, <laughs> don't and also buddy. you read that book. Your friend Ali is not from <laughs> India. Yeah, yeah. Your, hey, Miss Love, your friend Ali, oh, this book's really speaking to me. Um, <laughs> there was a doctor that went over to, the, you'd know about this, I'm sure, that went, because it was talking about the, uh, the, the psychological effects of small, like changes in co- small cultural, small changes in like cultural changes. So like not about 
logical changes or whatever, just, just like a cultural phenomenon in terms of like making something popular and giving it a marketing effect and then it sticks in your mind. Because apparently in the 90s, a doctor went over to Pakistan and like no one was washing their hands with, with, with soap. And he, it was a, he, he, they, couldn't, they couldn't make the majority of people start using soap in when they like in the bathrooms and stuff, and, and they, they can't managed, make me use. <laughs> and then they managed to number two only, most of the time. Spoiler wink, wink. alert: they're still unsuccessful. <laughs> no, 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 no. But apparently, no, no, apparently no, no. that's not the case. No, actually, there. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, apparently, uh, he managed to basically endorse some celebrities of the time and make it more culturally cool to wash your hands with soap, and then like eighty percent of like gastric diseases gone. And dropping just because they just the way that they tapped into the psychology of like a habit, and he did I mean, that. Prevention is is good, but like what I'm saying is these problems huge, are right? much bigger than this. Was this is pre pandemic world where you're supposed to do this? <coughs> right now, their management yeah. has because their priorities are wrong. Their priorities when they first when the first the, when the pandemic came, India's concern wasn't how the fuck do I vaccinate 1.3 billion people. You know what they were thinking of? Ooh. We're the pharmacy for the world. We'll start exporting vaccines to third world, to, to other countries, and that way we can get influence. We can combat China over there. Their priorities are wrong. That's not going to work. You need to fucking fix your own public right. first. Uh. You need to understand how big of a threat you're, you are in. Wait, Stop. Are they the vaccine capital of the world? Yeah, it's the pharmacy capital of the world. What? They produce, they produce all kinds of medicines that get exported to the rest of the world. In fact, there's a huge problem now because Angela Merkel recently came out and said, we need to rethink this because India is now ravaged with COVID. They clearly need vaccines, but there were contracts for vaccines all over the world that were supposed to come from India. Mm. What's so, the, oh, they're not capable. No, they are still capable, but like there is a huge ethical issue oh, ethical, where yeah, yeah, yeah. do I give vaccine to literally the person that is yeah. dying, dying next to yeah, me yeah. or send it off to Germany because we have contractual obligations. Mm. And Germany's point of view is, and it's a very self but it is, they were saying like, I understand, but you, if we're going to make you the capital, the pharmacy capital of the world, you need to have your shit together. Yeah. Is basically their point. So it's kind of that like you can't you be can't that just, fucked up, yeah. and we still expect you. We've given, we've put all our eggs in one basket. So there's this whole rethinking. In fact, there's now issues with Indian foreign policy, India and the U.S., which were coming together as this like you know um, this this coalition along with Australia and Japan as like you know the ones that are supposed to guide the 21st century. There's already rifts between Indian for uh, Indian relations with the U.S. because India, when this happened. But even before it got extremely public, they quietly called the U.S. and said, hey, look, this is a pretty bad situation. Um, you have a lot of AstraZeneca vaccines that you're not even using because most of the American population has now been vaccinated. And there are even holes on AstraZeneca because they use Pfizer and other ones. So like, can you give them to us? And the response by the Americans were like, oh, sorry, these vaccines are made for U.S. citizens. And even their press secretary came out and they said, Sorry, these vaccines, and they had, there was a legal reason because when Trump sanctioned these vaccines, he said it needs to be used for, um, for for uh, for US. But that India was like really shell shocked by that uh, mm. response because they were like, "Hey, what about the fact that we're coalition members? You know, we share same values. We were together, going to fight wars and Would stuff." Would Biden have allowed them to use the vaccines later as damage control? But India is already pissed off by this. They're rethinking their US foreign policy Shit. because they're like. If I can't depend on you at the worst time possible, then I don't know if we can... Look, the, the geopolitical factors are such that they'll still stay together, at least for the time being, but this has caused a strain in India's relationship with the US. And I think India needs to understand that you can't, you can't be like this global geopolitical player and get prominence that way. You need to first get your house in order. You need to first be in a situation where you are strong enough, you're... Your institutions are strong enough to be able to withstand all of this. Then you go elsewhere. You can't be poor and take over the world. You have to first get rich and then take over mm, the world. Mm, mm. And so India, Indian, the current Indian government is more interested in foreign policy objectives of how we can do this to China or how we can form a coalition with the U.S., how we can send vaccines to, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Bangladesh and then get their promise. They are, th their priorities are completely wrong. And Modi is so... Um, the governance skills are so bad. Like I was saying, there was this massive lockdown, which backfired because 
you can't do a massive strict lockdown in a country where most of the population depends on daily wages. Mm. Are you going to get people to starve? That's true. And so he did that. That backfired. Then he was like, okay, okay, okay. Um, we're not going to do any of that. And so when this new one came, they started, they were propagating that, well, we've reached herd immunity, we'd be fine. And they just fucking went into utter collapse. Shit. What you know what else? <coughs> he probably still going to win the next election in a landslide. I don't know. But really? he did, if funnily enough, this is how idiotic the government is, that while India was going through this, um, there were elections happening at the same time in a, in a state called, in a, uh, in a state, the state of Bengal. And Modi lost by a two-third majority. Is he supposed to lose? Um, he Not by a two-third majority. So what is They were out? saying that he might win. But he was the one who kept going. They were like, no, we'll have elections. He allowed um, so he's in several out? of these holy and Hindu festivals where like not hundreds of thousands, millions of people congregate. It's the largest religious festival in the world. It's bigger than the Muslim pilgrimage. And he, they were like, yeah, in, in a pandemic, well, sure, just go for it. Shit. So is it at the stage where everyone has it now? Yeah, they're they're Fuck. the other thing that they so it pales in comparison to say Britain. Yes, because there was a point I remember where in London they were turning people away from hospitals, right? And people that were sick were getting in cabs with people that weren't sick Fuck. and going home. So the situation is far more dire in India. Which now that I say it out loud, that's not surprising at all. Sorry, continue. Can I, can but I'm just, just it's just stop. like, it's just scary to think that there's a, a scenario that's much worse than Britain's. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, uh, the Indian, there are a few, like we, we, we knew about the UK variant. There's a few variants. There's Everyone knows about like the Brazilian and there's the Indian one. I don't know about we that. We don't know a yeah. lot. There's, there's well, variants. Well, that's not surprising. The bay, bay, there's bay, South bay, African bay. one. But what we what we, <laughs> we don't know I if know the that's from. Indian variant is more <laughs> lethal. Oh but what we know is that it's way more contagious. So I don't like in that. the first in the first wave, a family, uh, someone in the family would get uh, a positive COVID result. Everyone, in, uh, most of the people in the family would not get COVID positive. Now everyone in the family is COVID positive. Fuck. So it's spreading at a much Foster. Can I ask what about the surrounding country? What about Pakistan? Like all of them are bad, but Pakistan is better. Why, why is that? Just borders. I don't know the answer He's to prime that. I wish better. I no. That's not. It's the case. borders. I don't it's borders. know the answer in, to it. Pakistan is not allowed in India. For one, Pakistan has taken um, the uh, you know what they call them the SOPs, but like wearing masks and stuff slightly more seriously. Like right now, how funny is this? Some of the people in Pakistan that weren't following the orders they've got the military to patrol the streets and just be like um you R need to do this Russian style. and if you don't then you've got to be like you've got to like uh do push-ups or some shit <laughs> yes how's that gonna solve shit well but you can't i don't know but it just works in india it. huh you can't put that it happens in india too but pakistan is slightly <laughs> more serious about it but again i don't know same thing happens with pakistan what so about like nepal poorly equipped that if the infections go the way India is, it will also be in a state of catastrophe. Really? What about Nepal? Because Nepal borders India, right? Yeah, they're all kind of bad. But the problem is that India is just huge. The scale of everything is much larger over there. Just Nepal population. is a small country. Just yeah, population. Close to what? 18% of the population? Are they still doing the, the flag ceremony? Well, I don't know what they're doing anymore, but I think it's too late to do anything now. Uh, what they really need to be just doing is the hell's the straight up damage control. And hopefully they learn from this that they need to privatize, uh, uh, prioritize healthcare a lot more. Mm. Um, but yeah, things are, things are pretty bad and you feel for them. But I just like the whole sort of um, the narrative in Australia is like, oh, look how bad COVID is and it's ravaged the country. Yeah, COVID is bad, but the country was also, they... Like, no, it's yeah, it's hard yeah. to say it at this point because they are down, but they needed to do it a lot better. And not now. They, they should have been doing it for like I mean, the last 25 say this, years. You could say the same thing to a way less degree about America, where Trump was... I mean, you I know couldn't. You, that's what I'm saying. That's a false equivalency. America, right, yeah, right, it right. could go bad in America, but America is well equipped. Yeah, right. They, they the have catered... Com by most standards, they're well equipped, just like we are. Yeah, well I suppose too. you're right. It's, but you can kind of say the same thing in Australia. Uh, mm. that's really what happened in our hospital system as well, that 
they've just been stripping it bare for the last nine years and we would have been much better equipped if they did not. The exact same things are happening, I guess, globally, which is that the public sector is slowly dissipating. Right. And I suppose it's just going to be way worse in a country like India. Mm. It is the case of the world, though. And in, in particular for Australia, my criticism is the whole debate right now is, is the Australian government evil for banning Indians from coming at a time of catastrophe? That's a whole debate all together. But what we should really be talking about is why is the Australian government a year on? Now we should blame a bit, uh, blame ourselves too. Why a year on from the pandemic, why do we still not have a decent quarantine facility? Right now, people are like, I'm... A lot of people just be like, oh, it's it's evil and everything. I, know, It is, but at the same time, I also understand how inf- how infectious this strain is. I also understand scary. that 50% of the people in quarantine facilities are now coming with COVID. So I empathize, but I think the, this, the, the not, focus should not be on is the government evil or not. The focus should be on how incompetent is our government that we still don't have a decent quarantine facility. We shouldn't have been in this position where we have to ban people. That's something we should need to look, you know, that's we need to look at ourselves. That's a pragmatic approach. It's too easy for people to be like, They're, that's evil. That's good. That's evil. That's mm, evil. That's good. <laughs> that's evil. It's so dumb. Six months ago. Well, at least they mulled over one of the evil ones. <laughs> but six months ago, uh, <laughs> Queensland Premier Palaszczuk, six to seven months ago, started suggesting publicly that, hey, these hotel quarantine... Um, options Aren't is was great. a makeup option, like, but we really need to be setting up a proper facility. And I remember Scott Morrison was laughing at her. He said, "Ha ha ha! Well, try to convince your people to do it, or try to convince the uh, the other premiers to do it." Bitch, what's your job? You are supposed to be convincing her. She's saying something that's actually legitimate. Mm. It's we are also incompetent. Maybe not as incompetent as the Indian government is, but we're not that great either. No. Nah. It's just that there's more wealth here, so it's easier for mm. people. And the other thing is, yeah, if you're wealthy, you don't just pray to Vishnu that you don't get it. Yeah. And again, I suppose Scott Morrison did do that, and he is wealthy. Yeah. But the average person, if they have enough wealth and enough resources, they know basic steps that they can take. And our population is... As opposed to just being like, yeah, well, the festival, John, I'm not, not going to go. Yeah, and then when our, obviously our population is a fucking minuscule, minuscule compared to India, so that's obviously a fucking massive, massive component. And in my view, is still too high. Too big, man. Take that to the bank. Uh, no, look, it's all very concerning, and pff, I don't know. I mean, the fuck do you even say to that? Like... I nothing. don't even what you what you there's nothing you can do. This pandemic no, will say? eventually like, get over. Eventually yeah. things will go back to normal, however long it takes, two years, three years. And I'm hoping that once we hit that point where things go back to normal, I hope that all of our governments, including the Indian government, looks at themselves a little bit and prepare themselves, not just for another pandemic, but just giving their citizens a quality life. Spend less on Raphael jets and trying to colonize the Indian Ocean and spend more on health and education. Well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I think, I, I hope it will. I hope it will. <laughs> How do you know? Because, dude, it's Modi. I don't know anything about He's so Modi. lame. Is he? <laughs> yeah. What's his vibe? I don't know anything about him. You know what it is? Uncharismatic, dumb, medieval Trump. Oh, dude. Damn. Don't you think? That's it's rough. It's just Donald Trump with none of the redeeming factors. Yeah, he's like a Hindu nationalist. Right. He, well, at least he believes in something. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to Trump just being like, I did make Trump steaks, damn it. That's what I believe in. <laughs> and they were tasty. <laughs> Fuck. Well, yeah. that's. I'm definitely going to look more in, like look into that. I mean, I did know about it, but... Um, Carl... What's his name? Carl Stefan... Um, Stefanovic, yeah. Stefanovic. He... Yeah, he, he got into an a live brawl with Scott Morrison over this issue. Really? What he yeah. was like, mm, such a Carl thing to do, but go on. Uh, basically, Carl was saying, it's really unfair that you've banned uh, Australians from coming here. And uh, Scott Morrison was saying that we've, ba- we've based it on like risk perception, blah, blah, blah. No one ever mentioned like why you weren't prepared for it. Yeah. Again, uh, it's probably it's probably at this... At this uh, 
and Scott position Morrison a good so. move because we don't have the facilities. It's like it's like being like, you know what I mean? It's like being like, it's like if you had this preemptive measure, it would all be fine. You're too incompetent to have it. So yeah, this is probably the best move now, but it's not a congratulations. Well, that's an explosive uh, is it? opinion at the moment because right. uh, the there's a lot of people upset about the banning of Indians because there's like 9,000 Australians that are currently in India, including cricketers. <laughs> Yeah, right. but if you've got no quarantine base, yeah, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? We do have a quarantine base, but I think look, it's called I, the Ruby Princess. It's it, I am <laughs> just off the shore. Part. I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing. It's not a bad idea. Actually. That the risk perception of the number crunchers that advised the chief medical officer said that if we allow it, there is a risk that it will seep into the community, and from what we can gather from the data that we have from India that if it goes out, it's going to be a lot harder to contain it because it's way more infectious. Yeah, well, fuck So hell. it's that. Then there is another opinion that, no, we should be fine. We should be able to cater for them. I don't know the facts. Should be, but... It's risky, dude. Yeah, like We couldn't even do it when there was a couple of Germans in... Um, yeah. In, in, in Victoria. I don't think Carl would be as happy if he gets that strain. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What if it was you, Carl? Think about it. You clearly uh, have, but, have but Scott Morrison did say something Carl, that Shane. made uh, <laughs> Scott Morrison did say something that made Carl go. Uh, <laughs> Scott Morrison, d- 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 sorry, Scott Scott, uh, Scott Scott Morrison was saying how um, uh, Carl was saying uh, this is unprecedented that you just ban people from coming in, citizens coming in, and Scott Morrison says, "Well, I did with the China too <laughs> when the Wuhan crisis first started." Mm. And that's true. I the other thing is for people saying it's unprecedented, there's one example. Then the other example was um, ISIS brides. You know, all the women that went uh, to oh, Syria and yeah. Iraq to fight, technically they hadn't made, they had, their husbands may have committed crimes. Right. They could have been taken there out of force. We don't know. We, we need to like try them to find but out they if they are they guilty. Weren't let back. But we didn't let them come in. So it's not that unprecedented. I don't yeah. know if it's the best move either. So I don't want to like, Say I'm I'm on the side of the Liberal Party on this. I, they know what the risk perceptions are. It sounds pretty fucking serious. I don't know. It doesn't seem like a I stupid. Don't know. Things don't in know. India are not fun right now. I like so many people that I know. My brother knows who's like, yeah, my dad has COVID. My my auntie died from COVID. Like everyone has. Every Fuck. fucking person has someone from the immediate family member that has it. Fuck. Damn. It's insane. I wonder what would happen if it got to North Sentinel Island. Where's that? Dude, that would kill all of them. Where's that? That's the uh, oh, island the of uncontacted oh, people that, that apparently f- are a little more contacted than we thought. Right, but, right. Shit. And the only people that do contact them are Indians. Oh, so no. there must be their version of Scott Morrison right now just being like, that's it, no more waving at that fishing boat. Ah, <laughs> fuck. But you think that it would kill everyone there? Yeah. yeah, I wonder I what their quarantine strategy would be. There's like ah, voodoo. Aren't there like ten people there? I guess just like give them a room. I think it's two hundred and fifty. Shit, yeah, right. that's a big population. But I'm just I'm guessing uh, COVID. It'd be really <laughs> interesting to see how uncontacted <laughs> tribes handle COVID. They wouldn't handle. I don't know. Actually, either it would be really good or they'd actually be okay because they're nah, obviously they won't be. They have no immunity. They haven't been contacted by the rest of us. But I feel like they even maybe without they COVID, just they would die. make the tough decisions that we all want our leaders to do, i.e. bash the old chick over the head with a rock. But the thing is, they, they live healthy. Like, they, they, they don't eat like... Yeah, you know, but they, they don't have, have those uh, those immunities that you have, being from like an, from a community but surely there's that a certain has interacted level. with the yeah, rest of the world. Yeah, but do we have immunities no, to COVID? Yeah. Isn't that why no, we don't have immunities to COVID. You know but they don't have immunity you know to the, anything. But you know they don't even immu- have immunity you know to most flus. You know what's the first fucking barrier against like fighting uh, infectious diseases? I have immunity to COVID, you Yeah, well, or he left hey, dementia. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Time to make contact with North Sentinel. <laughs> no, dude. The first, the first like, f- uh, the battlefront of like de- Have you heard of Allah? What, defeating <laughs> defeating uh, infectious And they'd be like, yes, I listen to the speaker every fucking day, you ass. Yeah, <laughs> turn it down. <laughs> anyway, go on, go on. Eating, having a good immune system and eating like f- well is a good 
way to fight. No, it, it, for disease. sure. But so like, look, I think it's, they'd be fine. It's, it'd be better off. I, I understand that. That's true for all of us. Yeah. But less so for uncontacted tribes. I don't know if it would be. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. No, 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 no. When, when, because uh, their cousins or closest relatives that are on islands that are close by, I can't remember what they're called, the Jawanese. I just remember that they have a very similar name <laughs> to those little people in hoods in Star oh. Wars that are trying to junk C-3PO. Yeah. It was like, get off me. Get yeah, off they're me. Like, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, they're yeah. cool. They uh, pretty much are <laughs> dying for the same reason, which is just what happens in colonisation, that even when you're trying to be nice to the people like the Indian government somewhat Smallpox. is, just all those diseases just go straight through their communities and kill them all off. I guess you're right, though. It's best... But them. I want to know what their quarantine procedure is for something that they don't know exists. Yeah, Jesus. They don't have a quarantine. It's so weird stupid. that the whole world for the last year has completely stopped, except on North Sentinel. It's been exactly the same. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's no. kind of cool. Finally, some poetic justice, you know? For what? For them just being like, we were right. You don't need iPhones, you know? <laughs> now, the next question. What is an iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's advantages to living on a small, isolated island. Well, recently I was just at some baller's mansion. I was looking at it and thinking, fuck, this is the peak of civilization. Yeah, it was a mad house, but at the same time I was just thinking, probably would be better just walking through a forest and killing a pig. Yeah, definitely. I think that's everyone knows that. It's just that you want the esteem and you want to leave a, what do you call it, a legacy and make something of yourself, whatever that means. But I know that when everyone gets to 60, they're like, I just want to grow tomatoes, you know? Yeah. Facts. Yeah, hard facts. I think that I'd be much more <coughs> proud of making a ceramic bowl that took me three days <laughs> on fire that wasn't hot enough to do it. Definitely. Anyway, should we close out on memeing my friend's bird page? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and also I need to close out on memeing myself. You do that? No, you do that first. camera has stopped working for some reason. That's the camera that I need. I'm going to have to move to your seat, miss. That's that's fine. Okay, well, let's just do this quickly. So this is just something for you to do for me. So a friend of mine, she's like really lovely, super, she's like a really polite, lovely English uh, lady. And she's a fiance of my best mate. Anyway, this is, you're, yeah, anyway, she has a bird uh, photography Instagram page and it's mad. And she, she's just like, she's like, I think it's good, but I haven't got many followers. I'm like, well, I have a large audience. So uh, let's see if we can fix that. So anyone watching, how what are numbers? We're still, we're up there with numbers. Okay, I just want you to go and follow her page. That's it. And maybe you can do like hashtag Brighton for life. I think that'll scare her adequately enough. Because she was like, don't do it. No, I'll have to post more. It's too too much pressure. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes you need a bit of a push. So go on fluffy underscore avems. So F-L-U-F-F-Y underscore A-V-E-M-S personal blog birds of australia and perhaps beyond and uh well that's a bit of a tease yeah yeah and i I want you i want you to i want to get her a thousand can we get it to a thousand please having not seen this instagram page i'm imagining birds of australia is show me show me let me let me give it uh well that's my seal of approval that's just a photo do you want me to find the real one that's just a photo here i'll find uh find me the page okay let's do a quick review let's see if it's even all right no it is it's she's good hold on uh yeah, yeah. Uh, and then once you're there done, you go. With, okay, okay. Real, f- real film, none of this digital shit. Hey, man, this is actually a good page. I'll show Jordan. But you know why I want to do it? Mm. You know, really polite, lovely English Aww, people that are talented, nice and they do that whole thing of like, oh no, I, I couldn't possibly do that. Like the nicest person ever. Like, no, no, that's silly. I, I can't. I don't want to be a bother. All I can do is wear cardigans. Yeah, just, just, just totally just sort of like, I don't want to be a bother. It is. It's a picture of an Indian miner. First shot. That's why you need to sign up. I'm just like, she's like, I don't want to be a bother. I'm like, no, you do want to be a bother. I want you to get to a thousand. I want, no, you're, just, you're a fucking legend. I want you to get up there. I want the, you need the followers. I'm sick of it. I'll follow her. I yeah. Actually, what I a wholesome like Instagram page, page yeah. instead of, do you want to see my roided ass? I know. Yes, I do. <laughs> but I also want to see boy, birds. Yeah. So guys, please, can we get it to a thousand? And if you want to write something, just be like, 
Just say she's from Brighton. So be like, hashtag Brighton life. Don't be mean because she's such a sweet, lovely person. And she didn't want me to do this. She was like, no, no, I don't want, it's no, honestly, don't do it. Anyway, I've got some scones for you. I'm like, nah, nah, sorry, I'm doing it. You're too nice, it's happening. Yep. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And it's also great that the next page down from this is Flume. <laughs> Second, <laughs> the second most visited <laughs> Instagram page of Miss Loves. I, fuck, what? That does not make sense. Are you releasing tasty tunes? This is a troubling time for us all. Anyway, one all right, more, so one more time, one, one more time. Fluffy Avems. Maybe that's why not many people are follow, following it, Lucy, because I don't know what the fuck that means. But uh, yeah, F, uh, you got it. Fluffy Avems. Just uh, that's not going to work. But is, what are they saying? Are they going to do it? No, not a Ven. Why couldn't we? Fluffy A V E M S. Yeah, look, they're they're still talking about what we were speaking. Oh, for fuck's sake, Fluffy underscore A Vems. I bet it's just gonna. Oh, it's. I think it's already done. 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 It's already going up. Yeah, it's going up right now. It's going up in real time. Two two seven. It was like one thirty something. It's going up right now. Whoa, that's like now that's power. Hey, you guys rule. And yeah, if you want to write something, just write Brighton Life. Don't be mean. She's like an absolute champ. I just think, and, and for me, it'll be a funny joke because just seeing her being like, I can't believe, no, you, ah, I'm getting the scones is going to make me personally really happy, you know? Well, I'm, I'm, and glad I'm really that happy that, page, that you are like a it. kingmaker of Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and have already Alan given Jones. him more followers than Forrest Hall the band has. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that amazing? You're so good at everything except self promotion. <laughs> I'm such a dick. Feel free to fo- follow Forrest Hall. No, no, no. Unfollow no, Forrest no, no. Unfollow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Right, no, no, don't unfollow yes. Forrest Hall. I need the you Forrest. You had your plug. Oh, you fuck. wasted it, Miss Love. Fuck. Switch one seat. a year. One a year. No Forrest Hall. Just Fluffy <laughs> Avems. Like one time I could fucking promote my band. I was like, nah, nah, no chance. No chance. Unfollow uh, Forrest Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Unfollow Forrest no, Hall. No, no. Follow that Please. Fluffy Birds. And if you miss having music in your Instagram page, follow Flume. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. He needs Flume it. needs it. The guy living in a mansion in LA for like that guy needs it. Fuck Forrest Hall. <laughs> All right, switch seats because you need that camera. For yeah, something. jump on. Hey, good job. Two fifty already. This is geez. how many did she have before? One thirty eight. Holy shit, she's gonna have a very, very Dude, uh, that's interesting gonna, morning. I, I hope I get. A, I hope I get a message because that's gonna be really good. All right, Jordan, that's your camera. Whatever you want to say. This one? Yeah. Dude, say it like say it like hot ones. That camera, that camera, that camera. No, Tell us what you got going on in your life. But it's that just camera, that camera. That ca- yeah, just that camera. <laughs> especially seeing as that camera doesn't work. What's <laughs> new at Friendly Geordies? <laughs> that camera is also the worst camera imaginable. <laughs> it's one that you would have gotten as a birthday present in year eight. Hey, I bought it with my heart. <laughs> Do you know who bought it year for eight me? Money. That camera was but brought to me by Clive Palmer. <laughs> true story. True story. Um, all right, go. Cool. Well, I have a special announcement for you. Gather round, yon boys and girls. If you would like to be an editor for your old pal, friendly Geordies, we have an opening. That camera. That camera. And that is why I need an editor because <laughs> <laughs> I. Definitely need another one to join the family. And by join the family, I mean I'm probably not going to talk to you ever in your entire life. (laughs) I'll have someone liaising with you, possibly Christo, who will come over to your house and hand over dumps of Miss Love's just scouring through, I'm assuming, MasterChef and getting my (laughs) response of, duh, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. And you will be continuing... (laughs) The wheel that is the most vital news service in the country. And so I'm saying that your country needs you if you are from the Sydney area and not this greater Sydney area. I don't want to hear anyone say, well, I'm from Gosford. <laughs> no Gosford allowed. Yeah, no I'm one from, from Gosford allowed. No Holsworthy yeah, allowed either. And it tears me up inside. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I know this is all news. This is all new news to me, but like, uh, can you afford another? We'll talk about that later. <laughs> No, (laughs) but I'm taking a punt. I'm going to be giving you some part-time work here and there because I think that what the aim is is to get to five videos a week and you can be part of that. So here's what I want from you. You are going to edit me in the following clip 
The next few things that I say, you are going to turn into a friendly Geordie's video and you're going to send it through. And if you got chaps, damn. I'll move away because I'm is, still in this camera. This is sick. Yeah, this I'll is, stay. I'll I feel stay. like I'm one of those like old, early jazz things where it's like, this is the show. If you impress Miles, you're in, you know? It's the only way that you should get a creative job. I like that. Yeah. Isn't this so much better than, my mum works at the ABC. You hate kid. Yeah. Uh, your mom's not talented. I assume you're not going to be either. Don't rock the boat. Wait, the following words come now, right? Yeah, go on. Go following on. words are now. I don't know if this is widespread news, but I personally don't like Scott Morrison, or as I like to call him, Mr. Beanbag. Did you know that Scott Morrison recently bunged up COVID? It's true. Just ask me. Also, I think that this guy who's an expert... Uh, in immunology also said something very similar. And I quote, Scott Morrison is not the best in the world at uh, his job in protecting the Australian public. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Not just me, an expert said that. Therefore, I'm right because that guy thinks that I'm correct. Anyway, let's move on to the next important piece of today. MasterChef. Look at that capsicum. Whoa, that's red. It reminds me of a baboon's ass. Um, let's look at what else they're cooking today. Oh, ice cream. You can't cook that. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'll continue talking about it for another 10 minutes so that we can get the advertising rev and pay for your salary. Hey, make sure that you like, subscribe, and if you want to see more videos about MasterChef, how about you actually tell me that because I would like to know Twitch family. This is not part of it anymore. You can actually include this if you want to, but I am just genuinely curious. Should we treat MasterChef as maths? Anyway, thank you very much for your time. All right, that's what you're going to Wait, turn how, into how did, Where did they send it to you? Uh, you. <laughs> uh, send. Uh, thank you so much. All right, no, that's the end of the broadcast. Send, thank it, you. send it to podcast at friendlygeordies.com. Also, come on, fluffy AVMs, get it up there. Two six one. We want more. It, more. <laughs> okay, 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 perfect. Uh, thank you guys. Thanks for the idea of Master Chef. No, no, Master Chef is dead. I like clap, Ma clap, I, clap. Yeah. By the way, did you just did you write that or did you just was that an oh, impromptu that speech? Well, it is my entire job to just talk off the top of my head. Yeah, I am impressive. like Bomb Funk MC, free straight off the top of my dome. Was that actually impressive? It was because I, I, I always think, think that I'm a terrible speaker. And then people come up to me in real life and say, hey, you're better at doing public speeches than I am. Wow. Well, <laughs> just, just, just. <laughs> do it professionally. But no, that was really good. That was actually just, just, really good. Just quickly, I, the boyfriend of Lucy, the, whose page it is, who is the most polite person ever and has never sworn in her life, just messaged Mikey, her fiance, and said, quote, what the fuck is happening to my phone? Yes! <laughs> Keep, keep, keep at it. Good keep at it. We love that. That's what I like to hear. And I really like the fact that you didn't use it to plug your own band. Yeah. See you next year. See you guys. See you.